what's up everybody i hope everything's working welcome to episode 22 of the scope uh graciously adjo joined again by buffner gaming how's it going dude really good man how are you it's been a crazy week we got a lot to go over here huh <laughs> it's it's been an insane week and with the luck i have with everything i knew it would be I, I was in my work meetings and stuff checking my phone and just watching twitter go crazy <laughs> and watching youtube go off and then i'd be watching your videos in the hotel room at night to see what was all going on and uh, i just figured i figured it would happen yeah it, it, it was definitely and i was out of town this weekend too so i didn't i thankfully nothing crazy dropped but yeah it was insane we had a bunch of tarkov news the battlefield update all the modern warfare 2 information coming in so a lot yeah. of a lot of stuff to go over today honestly and i was going to talk to you about like your summer game fest like takeaways but i feel like the only one missing from the party was kind of halo they were like mia from anything they were i didn't i didn't hear anything about halo but there was um there was a lot of games that i saw that were just you know, the, the type of game that I typically like the single players and stuff like that, that looked actually pretty fun for the story type campaign. I know. And then the last of us, uh, remade on the next gen consoles. That's, I don't know if that's something you've played or anybody in the chats played the last of us. The first one was, uh, actually one of the first and very few actual non FPS stories that I actually played through. And they're adapting that to an HBO series too. So if anyone hasn't played yeah. it, I would recommend it. It's uh, and then, one hell of a story. Uh, they're also they're also doing the uh, they're also doing the uh, it's coming to PC, right? The first one's coming to PC. I too? think it is. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. Should be like all PC and both next gens. They remade it for. So yeah. Whoa! Definitely uh, check it out. It's good. Road to, road to Vostok in the chat. Holy crap, dude! Thank you uh, so much for the kind words. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this with Road to Vostok. It's a game that we talked about on a couple episodes, and I was actually going to touch on it again as well. Um, thank you so much for popping in and the kind words and uh, the Twitter follow as well. Um, it's an awesome game, really, that I'm looking forward to. And if if any of you are like have any kind of interest. And even you, Mr. Podcast listener, I'm talking to you too. If you have any interest in game development, subscribe to that channel. The game dev blogs are super, super informative and are, are really incredible. What a single person is doing uh, to come up with a really cool game. I love the vibe of it. It's got the, like the Stalker 2 kind of Tarkov mm -hmm. type vibes. I believe it's, oh man, I'm going to my terrible geography. I think it's a game about uh, the boundary zone in between russia and finland I, I don't even i don't remember what it is off the top of my head but i've i've been following so those videos popped up for me a few uh a few months back i think and i i've been watching them too so it's it's crazy that he's in chat that's awesome I'm definitely <laughs> definitely a fan i'm looking forward to getting yeah. my hands on that someday i'm i'm a big fan as well uh super kind of you to take the time to pop in because i'm pretty sure you're probably very busy <laughs> we're, we're working on the game um definitely definitely looking forward to it and we'll, we're gonna keep covering every step of the way here on the scope as well because it's something that we around here are looking forward to for sure so we'll uh we'll definitely check that out and i was actually going to talk about it today because he did uh have another blog post just a couple days oh, ago wow. and it talked about um it showed like looting and how it would be placed around the map and stuff like that and then every time he, uh uh he shows like the time lapses of like the step by steps where they block it out and then he adds lighting and then he adds textures and it's just a really awesome behind the scenes look at how a game is developed so like if you want to see how the game that we're all probably going to be playing later on is going to be going if you want to see like where it comes from the steps along the way check it out follow that channel and it, it's it's super interesting um I only caught, so since I was gone all week, I really only caught the Xbox show. And I had a couple, I had like a couple thoughts on it. I was like, so it was the Xbox Bethesda showcase, right? And I'm like, what is this gonna be like in a year or two when it's the Xbox Bethesda Activision Blizzard showcase? Like, are they gonna take all that stuff from, so, and it's gonna be like, Xbox is like taking over the world, I feel like, and then, like Game Pass keeps getting stronger and stronger and stronger um, to with everything that's going to be day one. Uh, the stuff they showed there, uh, 
they were it was they recovered nicely i felt like because people were saying it wasn't going to be very good with like redfall and starfield and stuff being uh being like delayed but I, I think they did well i think overall xbox did well because they i feel like they moved away from all the cgi trailers um it was actually yeah, there, gameplay there was yeah they showed a lot of gameplay which i was i was surprised with as well especially because there was uh like tweets that came out the day before saying to to like taper your expectations. <laughs> so, but I, I felt it was a pretty good show. I checked out most of it and a lot of the gameplay they showed looked awesome. So, um it looks like everyone for the most part is back to developing pretty good solid games after after COVID so far from what I saw. And, and I'm hope I'm hoping that people are like getting tired of the like the super crazy CGI trailers of a game that I'm gonna get to play in like six years. Like I'm kind of, I think we're all kind of over that. So what was cool about the Xbox showcase was that like, these are all things that are coming to even Game Pass in like 12 months. So that that's yeah. cool. I'm, when you, when you say CGI trailers like that, I just, my mind instantly flashes back to the, uh, the Killzone 2 trailer way back in the day i don't know if you were following stuff back then i was i don't know that one insane insane e3 trailer for kills on 2 which was they said was in game gameplay but it wasn't and it like was this huge hype and it didn't release for like another five years and it didn't look that good unfortunately and and like and like kind of kind of cyberpunk too like those trailers i thought looked amazing and then when Mm. the game come out we came out we all saw like the glitches and all that stuff yeah so that was pretty cool. I'm sorry, chat. I'm trying to recover. Like I'm a little starstruck that Road to Vostok was in the chat. So I'm, I'll be all right. I'll be fine. We'll pull it together. Um, you I'm trying to. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, that's because that's that's pretty much all I I got to see. Um, Summer Game Fest did its thing. Really, the only like big controversy was the deal with uh, Tom Henderson leaking the Hideo Kojima uh, game. It was pretty funny. Yeah, and them asking to take it, them asking them to take down the article. So it's like, well, that's confirmed. Um, It sounds like it's going to be partnered with Xbox and going to be a uh, cloud-based game. So kind of like how Google Stadia and stuff works, but with Mm. like an Xbox cloud type game. So interesting how that That that's going to work out. That will be interesting for sure. But yeah, with a lot to talk about, uh, we can move on into. Battlefield 2042 Season 1 map. Uh, All right. Um, I actually played it. Sad Balls mod in the channel. Shout out. He made me play it on Twitch uh, <laughs> a few days ago. And I couldn't launch the game for a while. It gave me an oh, error. No. It said, like, error cannot create file 32. So if you guys see file 32 out there anywhere, I'd love to have it back. Because apparently I can't create my own. <laughs> and uh, so I got in. And it's cool, man. I The map feels like battlefield so i i like that it it feels good it it almost feels like it almost feels like they did build those first seven maps for battle royale and this is the first map that they designed for that um i think there's a lot of positivity around the community um but i'm just i just don't want people i don't want the community community to get complacent and accept one map as a Mm -hmm. dlc and be happy with that it's really sad uh sometimes how these i feel like these companies are trying to condition us to expect less have you have you tried it out you know i haven't unfortunately and it's it's i'm glad you had to play it because i i followed the content i watched everyone's videos i watched some live streams with it and i'll agree the map looks the map looks amazing and i i i wanted to jump in and play it but then again I didn't want to reinstall it and I didn't want to go through the hassle of, you know, are my settings, are my settings reset since I uninstalled it and all that, especially just for the additional content outside of the map that we did get. But I I will admit the map itself looks, looks really good. And I do want to jump in and play it. I think for me right now, I'm kind of wait, I'm going to wait till season two and see what they do with that. Cause I, I really, the fact that there's still only two LMGs, but I mean, it looks to me like this is definitely heading in the right direction. Two new vehicles. Um, they got, you know, only three total weapons. I believe if we include the smoke launcher. So we had the, um, the BS, I forgot what they called it. It's essentially a VSS 
M Venturas, which you can convert to an AS Val. So we have that in the portal as the AS Val. But uh, I think that's a good weapon. It's cool to see that. Um, and then you had the smoke launcher, which looks pretty neat as well. And then um, some other additional content there, which is nice. Uh, I do think I did see a tweet today saying that they were bringing um, the M24 Hind and one of the infantry fighting vehicles to uh, to the portal this season. So two additional vehicles coming to the portal, which... Personally, that's a little bit disappointing. I would like to see more. So you have a good point there. You know, we do want to see more content. Um, there's, it, it sound, it's like they're in the right direction. We just need a little bit, a lot more of it. <laughs> I yeah. Think. And I, I actually said in my video, I mean, for heaven's sakes, like there was two weapons and one of them's a crossbow. Like that's it. That, that was the and, other one. I couldn't think of it because it's not yeah, like an actual weapon. Yeah. It's, so it's not an actual gun. It's a crossbow. It was crazy. And then, um, I, I think this honestly gives me more hope for the next battlefield than it does this one. Um, I does, think the yeah. I think the ship has sailed on this one, but this map, like I, I don't think this one map is going to hold people's attention for four months or whatever it is going to be until the next season. Um, but at the same time, it it makes me hope or think that the maps that are in the pipeline now that are coming for the next game battlefield seven stay tuned pre-order everybody no um is actually going to be better and good and, and that they're listing on that so yeah the new the new gun i've heard is like kind of op is pretty strong but the the map is pretty good um i played it it brought a lot of glitches back for me but i feel like i have overall had like the worst luck of anyone with that game like 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 i said i tried to get into it i couldn't launch it and then when i played it i still had the stutters um i had a i had a hard time with hit reg mm -hmm. and just everyone all, i everything. was watching too couldn't even launch i remember i watched uh i watched westy's stream i think one, one of the days he was watching it, and it was just like three hours of him not even being able to get into a map and into it into the map or into any servers so that was definitely an issue for everybody it looked like that was persistent for the whole week on and off um and then justin in chat brings up a good point the vss is also a really really great fit for the plus system which um the plus system when you look at that in battlefield i was i i thought it was a good idea but it didn't it didn't change the weapons there wasn't enough customization to it like i thought there was going to be um so I think with this particular weapon, it starts, it looks like, as a DMR with the VSS Ventura. is essentially a medium close-range sniper rifle, and you can convert it to full auto with the AS Val. So I think that's, you know, that's perfect because you're making, you're, ma you're essentially making another weapon out of it. Um, whereas some of the other ones, it's just, it's more like we're just going to throw a different magazine in here. Um, it was just a little bit lazy, kind of, from, from the way they did it, it looked like. But this one, this new weapon looks really good. We just need more of it i really need we really need an lmg i think that'll definitely bring me back in if we can get an lmg at it yeah whenever i mean whenever you only have one gun i guess it's easy to get it pretty tricked out and fleshed <laughs> yeah, out exactly uh, um but then the other thing that floored me absolutely floored me was that there was no portal map zero i know stuff for portal and it's like or when you... portal content yeah there was no portal content in general yeah, they... just the, the two new vehicles that are coming that i might mention right i think that's it yeah, and I I was so confused because I thought that would be something that would get content throughout this game, and they'd possibly port the next portal over port mm -hmm. portal, they would port portal over to the next battlefield, and it would continue yeah. just to go on, kind of like Warzone went with a few titles of Call of Duty, and mm -hmm. they would just always be adding stuff that just increase the sandbox, and then the first season rolls around eight months later, and not a single map it was just like that that surprised the heck out of me again and then when you were talking about the issues at launch it's just like you kind of come to expect that from dice like anytime they add new stuff or launch a game it's always really rough uh tom mm -hmm. henderson mentioned that creators who played on the monday before had the same issue uh mm -hmm. they had to extend the play test yeah. by an hour or two because because dice couldn't get the creators even into their custom mm -hmm. server yeah so <laughs> and then the next day I was just ready for it. Like, again, I wasn't like following it too closely, but I was checking Twitter and I was just ready for it. Like, I know when this thing is going to launch, it's going to be rough. And sure enough. And Tom did that tweet where it's like, this is the same exact issue, the persistence errors or whatever that they had uh, in yeah. the play test. So it's a shame that that's what we've come to expect with any Battlefield releases. You're guaranteed 
a day of just broken stuff now. And that's, you know, that's not new with 2042. That's probably the, uh, the past few years, <laughs> just every time, every time there's an update, it seems to break, break the game for a while. So it's, it's unfortunate. <laughs> we're fortunate. We're just kind of used to that at this point. Yep. And the, the last little bit of controversy I wanted to talk about was, uh, so Jeff Grubb in one of his podcasts mentioned that the, I want to try to pull that up too. Uh, mentioned that Battlefield was on a skeleton crew. There were very few of them working on it. Mm -hmm. He talked about how they were just in basically abandoned ship mode, which I yep. thought was, uh, that was uh, pretty crazy verbiage if they're just trying to get get the last bit of the content out and, and abandon the game and not put any resources on it. And then uh, yeah. they actually came back. I was supposed to have to pull this up. Again, my production team garbage you um, know i saw i saw the tweets too though and i i i um i know they came but ea or battlefield themselves came back directly response to that and said they had a very vague statement they said you know we're committed to battlefield 2042 um turning this game around but they didn't they didn't they said they have a large team but they didn't give any specifics it was very vague when you looked at it so it sounded good uh outright but when you looked at the specifics of the tweet they were very very vague with everything and and i i have to say i believe uh tom and jeff grubb because look at the content we got for season one i think my theory about what happened post-launch is they had a crew working on it in the back end to probably change around some of the code and do some fixes to make it easier to make some changes on the back end to import things etc and then the rest of that team probably migrated out. Um, and now, like Jeff Grubb is saying, we have this quote unquote skeleton crew. Nobody, nobody knows how large that skeleton crew is, but their direct response didn't state numbers either. Um, but they're going to be working on the bare minimum to fulfill you know, their legal obligation for four seasons of support. But at this point, it wouldn't make sense looking at the way the game's going. It wouldn't make any sense to have your whole entire uh, studio working on this game. You know, it's... It, Unfortunately, it's a huge failure. So it doesn't make financial sense to pour more money and resources into it. Um, they recognize, in my mind, it sounds like they recognize we messed up. We need to start fresh with something new. And we also need to fulfill our obligations legally with this title. So I think yep. that's what we're seeing. Yeah, their exact words were, this is a significant team across studios focused on evolving and improving the Battlefield 2042 experience for our players. And at the heart of that is our team at DICE. So yeah, exactly. They did not give any specifics. They didn't say the majority of the original team or this percentage of the team is still working on it. They just said a significant and a significant number. And EA always leaves room for vagueness in these kinds of mm -hmm. things. Um, I 100%. Well, this is the same studio that told yeah. us Battlefield 2042 was way ahead of schedule. It just needed a couple more month, a month in the oven, and it would be good to go, and all that stuff. So they've they have essentially lost all their credibility to me, and yeah. um, just look at what they came out with: one map, yeah, one this, gun. I mean, exactly. The content speaks for itself, and this this tweet, like we said, it's very vague. If they actually wanted to counter that report, they would have given specifics. You know, what what studios, what's a significant team, what specifically are they doing? Are they doing backend changes, code changes? Are they doing something with, like, say, uh, whatever the code base is for Frostbite? Obviously, it sounds like from what we heard from Tom Henderson, the coding was a mess with Frostbite. We know notoriously it's a complicated um, engine. So what's happening on that end? What kind of content are they planning? They haven't been able to provide us any actual, you know, tangible anything to look at as far as what they're going to be bringing. We just know there's a few map changes coming. Um, and it's really weird because especially Temporal, before the game even launched, his weapon leaks that he was able to data mine had a uh, had an M249 saw LMG in there. And we haven't I was I was expecting that to come for season one. And it isn't here, which is crazy to me since he data mined that way back. He also data mined um, another assault rifle a few months back as well. Um, we didn't see that either. So it wasn't the, it wasn't what was released this season. Um, so it's weird. Um, it seems like that stuff's going to be drip content over the rest of their 
they need to they need to fulfill four seasons. So we're gonna get what based on the timeline, I think season two will be August ish somewhere in there, and then they're probably gonna have what's that gonna look like? They'll probably wrap up support for this game by the end of the year, and that'll be it. You know what I mean? I don't I don't foresee them doing anything beyond the four seasons of of support that they are obligated to do. Yeah, and uh, and Tom Henderson even said. Uh, or excuse me, no. Temporal also data mined four maps total. Mm, so I'm like, okay. is that it? Like, mm. is it going to be one map a season? And uh, that that would be pretty wild. I if, I think if, it is going to be, to be honest. That would be pretty wild if we've already seen like the extent of the content, and that's that's going to be it for 2042. That would. But that would to be to be, be honest, though, it's 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 crappy. That's what we're getting. But given the state of the game, I'd rather I would rather I don't want them to put more into this game. I'd rather them focus on getting things right for what's inevitably Battlefield Seven or what's hopefully a reboot like Modern Warfare did and just Battlefield. That's what this game that's what this franchise needs at this point. And if they mess up this next one, I think EA is gonna can the 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 title. So they really need to get that next one right. And I'd rather they work on that and do the bare minimum for this so yeah we'll just have I to think, see i think that's what they're doing and i feel like we said that i feel like we said that with this title as well this is it if this sucks it's over because battlefield 5 didn't go over that well but i don't i don't know how many times we can keep saying that but it, well, sure, we it sure does we, feel like that it does and, and we talked about it i think last time or two shows ago it's like the battlefield su- formulas for success is there they just haven't done it they haven't gone back to it yet like it's all you know all the way up to you know battlefield three and four were were gems battlefield one was really good as well um that's their formula they just need to do that and for some reason i think one of the issues i've always had with with dice and battlefield as of i'd say post battlefield four maybe mainly is they keep trying to reinvent and do something revolutionary um and in doing so they're creating you know unfortunately just bad titles it's like you have a you have a tire the tires tried and proven just make a tire that's round and, and they're trying to make something that's you know a triangle or a hexagon or some crazy crazy new tire it's just yeah. it's not it doesn't work they just need to make a battlefield game and pretty much hopefully they have people behind the scenes that understand what that is i hope so they're they they have to right like it's so loud at this point from the community what they want to see like i i don't know how they can miss it but they still do sometimes um yeah that pretty much covers it in a nutshell the game's moving in the right direction just at a snail's pace and i think 2042 the ship has sailed i don't think there's any saving it but um like i said it gives me hope and i just want to i just want to mention before we move on i think it's a i think it's a really good update for what it is um so i don't want to sound super negative about it i think that's exactly the update they needed they needed more of it though but it's definitely a good update it's in the right direction but i i i would uh i would i wouldn't expect more content than this for the the upcoming season so i think this is what we're going to get is one really well done map a hand you know one or two weapons something like that and then it sounds like Later this season and into the next season, you'll get some. They're going to be going back and reworking the existing maps. Um, so you know, don't I wouldn't expect too much out of this, but it's definitely the right update. I think they're doing what they need to do with this game, and then they need to move on and, and deliver what we all know Battlefield and Dice are capable of of doing. Yep, I think that sums it up really well. the The gun's pretty cool, and like you said, it fits in the plus system, and then mm-hmm. the map is is really nice. Um, my frame rates are still abysmal and then I'll have, I'll have people in my comments and stuff that'll say, Oh, mine's fine with like, and I'm trying to play it on a 30 90 and I can't keep it at 70 frames. Like, so I, I don't understand. And but... I hear that from everybody on, on, on like the higher end PCs that, you know, dump money into these PCs. They're all getting garbage performance. It sounds like with the, the frame skips and, and lagging and rubber band and all that. So it's it definitely a common good. problem. Yeah, they did they they did something really weird with this game that yeah, there's definitely some issues on the backside. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if they do something, you know, to overhaul the engine going into the next title. Honestly, I hope they go back to the Battlefield 5 engine for the next one. I hope they revert 
frostbite. I think it was a one. better engine. I think it was a better engine. Battlefield the game, one and five looked better to me than this. And ran better, way more yeah. optimized. And mm -hmm. I thought if you have a modern game with Battlefield 5's graphics and stuff, you'd be win. You'd be vibing. Yeah. Take my money. That's all I want. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um so yeah and hopefully they get rid of specialists all right i'll quit talking about it yeah. i get so negative man i build my channel on it and i just don't enjoy the game Ugh. yeah specialist it, i'm it, i'm curious what they're gonna do with the with the rework because they mentioned this they said they're not ready to do it it's pretty it's pretty obvious that uh the community doesn't want uh doesn't want specialist right so you know they need to they need to eventually get rid of them if it's not for this title it's for the next title I, I can i can see how it'd be hard to just completely take them out when your resources are probably your limited resources are are dedicated elsewhere but you know for the next title yeah i think it seems like it's a unanimous no we don't like it so yep so i suppose we could move on to the tarkov updates there is a lot here um I keep finding myself more and more excited for, for what Tarkov has to offer and what's coming down the pipeline. Um, there's a lot. I guess I have a kind of a list of what's there. Um, I don't know what you saw. Did you watch the Tarkov TV? Like the I, I didn't catch it live, but I I watched uh I watched some of the replays and I watched some other uh Tarkov's creators take. So I, I did go back and specifically look at the uh the footage of the new weapons. Um and you know a little bit of the lighthouse expansion things like that so that's that's i didn't watch the full thing but i i picked out what i wanted to see from it okay um yeah so the first thing i guess everybody's been asking when's the wipe gonna be when's the wipe gonna be um that is coming i did, did you see i no one really made um i can't remember uh the guy's name so when they're doing those tarkov tvs uh one of his uh helper his uh nikita's buddy in the background that's doing mm. the gameplay and stuff actually pulled out a playstation 4 controller and was oh, actually playing really? with the game yeah and like, like nobody's nobody's really been talking about that or talked about it. i mentioned it just for a second in my video but like yeah i don't know what that means it those those guys 100 percent could be trolling us just for fun to, to get people well, talking you know they can you can map um controllers to play that game because i was looking at it, I'm, I'm not i'm okay mouse and keyboard but i'm obviously so used to a, a controller so if you do look on youtube you know controller tarkov things like that there's tutorials showing how to map those controllers and make it make it work really well so i'm, I'm curious maybe that's what they were doing maybe they're adding some sort of controller support who knows but that's, that's yeah, i didn't catch that one so that's actually pretty interesting yeah it was interesting uh to see for sure i feel like one of these uh console uh, companies could come knocking on their door and want to try to do some kind of partnership to help them port it over. Mm -hmm. um, I could definitely see that. Um, they're doing, so not confirming or anything. Don't get excited, podcast listener. Um, <laughs> <we're>, <laughs> and then uh, there's new clothes coming. They talked about those for Bear and yep. Usec. Uh, new voice lines. The, the Bear faction is getting a broken English, like a heavily Russian-influenced English. <laughs> Uh, which should be pretty cool. And then, yeah, the next thing I have on here are the guns. Um, they're going to bring in, and I'll show some of these on screen. I have a few of them queued up, and then I'll just kind of run through them, and then you can talk about them if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The G36 entire family, which I think consisted of, he named off like eight of them. Uh, Benelli M3, which is going to be a really cool shotgun that can be converted from pump to, to semi-auto. And then um, uh, RD704 AK which is a full yep. auto uh 762 which hopefully could be could be an actual contender to the mutant which has kind of been meta for a little while for most of this yeah. wipe and then an actual grenade launcher mm -hmm. um that you're able to only get in one place from big pipe is the name of the rogue boss on lighthouse where you'll be able to try to take him down and do that and then another 338 lapua bolt action rifle i didn't see what it was called sorry and uh, a 338 suppressor for the new Bolty and the G28 or whichever one of those is chambered mm -hmm. in 338. So, yeah, I think I have some images of the G36 family. Yeah, the G36, um, to start with that gun, <clears throat> that one looks awesome. I'm actually really excited about that, just as I was the Scar last wipe. 
Um, G36, I think in the footage they showed the the standard G36. Um, could have been like a K, A4, or something like that. But if anyone's played Sandstorm, it's it was really cool to see they had the integrated sights on there. So the, the one that they showed in the gameplay, I'm sure we'll see it. Yeah, so you had the three the three times optic there with the top mounted red dot on there. So that big fat integrated optic. You have two optics there that are integrated. You have a three and a three. It's like a three or a three and a half right there. And then you have that top mounted red dot that they just showed. So it's great for think of it as like your hammer for for Tarkov essentially, but G thirty six integrated, which is awesome. Um, and obviously you'll be able to if they're bringing in the whole family um, as individual platforms. So you get. If that's how they're doing it, you'll get the G36, the G36C, the K, um, the MG36 potentially. You could probably make that because I'm sure they're going to have a, uh, a drum to go in there. So you could throw that on G36, make yourself an MG36 most likely, which would, I think, be our only, our first and only uh, LMG in the game. If you can, in, in fact, make that or if they do add it. Um, so the G36 looks awesome. I'm really excited to get my hands on that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, assuming I can get it and not die, which seems to be my my issue as of late. <laughs> Man, I played I played some Tarkov uh, actually between work and this broadcast, and I destroyed some fools on customs. Man, I, I need to get back into it. I haven't played in a while. I used to be I used to be pretty good, and then I I haven't been able to play too much lately. But yeah, it just, with the we'll weapons to... coming this season, this wipe, I got to get back into it. Yep, want we'll to get out there? Yeah, I killed it. I killed a three man and almost a five oh man. I got, God. I got, I got four of five. The last guy got me. You, you can um, carry me then. <laughs> it's not always like that. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> very streaky. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, sure. I think the G36 family I pulled up. Hopefully mm -hmm. people can see that. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah. We want to, so you got the G36, the one that you got the G36 with the grenade launcher, G36C, G36K, uh, I believe that is. A little hard to read those, but it's going all the way down to what looks like G36C. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. MG36, G36E, which is the same as the, as the standard, just export version. So, I doubt that'll be uh, specifically in the game. You get the, the K, the KE. Um, so, I'm, I'm curious how specific they'll get with this. I'm expecting we'll get the, the standard G36 and MG36, at least a conversion with the, the drum. I'm assuming we'll get the K um the kv and then the c so you can see the differences there mainly you get um the kv versus the ke the kv has that top picatinny rail for integrated optics whereas the ke has the integrated karen handle so those are going to be some differences whatever they showed off there was probably the ke or the standard g36 they had that integrated sides with the karen handle so um, I'm curious if you'll be able to take that off or there's going to be different versions, one with integrated optics and one with the Picatinny's. So that'll be, yeah. that'll be fun to play with for sure. It's pretty cool. I, I was only familiar with like the G36 C like there's, that's in several games already. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even realize the stock one had that carry handle with the integrated sights yeah. that look, look through the handle. That's pretty cool. And then, yeah, if that's an LMG, that's going to be. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty cool. I mean, to have you in the should game. be able to make it because even if they don't add that specifically, I'm guessing they'll have the drum for it. So you could es essentially just make it because it's the barrel length on the MG36 is the same as the standard uh, G36. So there's really no differences besides the addition of a bipod. So you essentially would have your own LMG. Um, I am curious though if they're going to add that uh, that 320 grenade launcher on there. That'll be interesting. Um, they very well could since you have grenade launchers that you can roll around with now and they're adding a, a, a automatic one. So it would be cool if you get that uh, on the underbarrel of your G36 for some versions. Yep. And there, there's actually, uh, there's already like the rounds for the, for the grenade launchers yeah. are already in the game for some reason. You can buy them and <laughs> yeah. sell, sell them and stuff, but they're not used for anything. But sounds like uh, next wipe, they're going to be used for stuff. Um, and that's that's the other thing. Like, I don't know when this wipe is going to be. Um, from from what the experts are saying, they're still saying towards the end of summer. Um, mm -hmm. He 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 didn't. Nikita didn't really say it's coming next week or it's coming really I think he soon. He just said soon, right? Like, yeah, it's like soonish. Soon the next, pretty yeah. much, the next update is going to be the wipe and have this, but yeah. they don't have a time frame on it. So mm -hmm. it's traditionally towards the end of summer. So think like July, August, more mm -hmm. more like August, um, is what everybody thinks. Good. That'll be good. And I think that that lighthouse map update will be really good for the map because the map when I was playing at the beginning of the wipe was just it was very 
I don't know. It did. It had a weird flow to it because it was basically everyone going over to the rogue camp and trying to farm rogues, and you would just get slapped by rogues or run into a bunch of PMCs. So hopefully that should add some more, uh, some more places for the PMCs and players to go on the map. Which would be good. Yeah, and I think I think the cadence for that is on this next update they're going to open that up and mm-hmm. everybody can go there. Um, mm-hmm. but you can't go inside the lighthouse yet. And then right. in a future update, they're going to close it all down. You will be able to go in the lighthouse. That's where the trader will be. And then you'll have to have something to access to go out on the bridge out to the lighthouse to get to the trader. So I'm That's very, cool. very curious to see how the in game trader is going to work. Like, are people just going to camp that bridge to catch people coming back from the trader? Or like, like how how is that going to work? So I'm I'm interested to yeah. see how they implement that because that's what they uh, technically want to do uh, mm-hmm. going forward. So yeah, that should be good. Um, I'm excited for the map update and then that other some of their weapons there that um, RD704 is the Rifle Dynamics 704. So that's a I believe it's an American made Rifle Dynamics AK in 7.62. Um, it looked really good. It looked. It looked like something I need to get my hands on. So I think he Nikita said it's going to handle better than the AK, or it's going to statistic stats wise, it's going to be better than the AK and should be a contender for the Mark uh, Forty Seven Mutant. So um, you can see there, it looks beautiful. I'm sure we'll get a lot of different attachments on there, but you have the windowed magazine on there, which is good. That'll be easy to count the rounds exactly. Um, and then you can see the unique handguard and everything on there. So it's going to be a really good and fun weapon. I'm curious what kind of other attachments they're going to add for this thing, but it should be should be a lot of fun to use that. And the G36 specifically is what I'm excited for. What do you think of the production team was all ready for that with the footage of the RD? I'm proud of them. On the ball. Love it. Let's go. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be cool. So there needs to be something to take on the mute because that's all. Yeah. That's pretty much all you see, like, running around customs right now this late mm-hmm. in life. Everybody's got a mutant with BP ammo. Yeah, so it's crazy. Yeah, that'll be cool to see. Um, I was going to try to find. I think I found a clip where he starts. He goes in and checks out the lighthouse a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we can we can play this while we um, talk about the other stuff. No, we're mm-hmm. not launching the Epic Game Store. <laughs> I always yeah, question like- my my ability to aim with a mouse when I can't even click on the right program. <laughs> yeah, um, this looks. This looks. Oh wow! So this this is. That's gonna be cool, you know. That's, oh, dude, this re- this reminds me heavily of uh, one of the DayZ maps. There was this like huge bridge. That looks. That's gonna be awesome. I'm excited for this. Sorry, podcast listener. Um, but that's the uh, that's the new shotgun too that he had. Uh, the M3. They're gonna have to do something with balancing on that. I don't. It it converts from pump action to semi-auto, and I don't know mm-hmm. why you would ever want it in pump action. They might have to do something with like the tightness of this or something i'm sure it. it'll be something like the the range or something they'll have to have some some pro and con to to it yeah otherwise it won't make, won't make a lot of sense um yeah so yeah it looks really cool i've been super excited for tarkov again uh clean uh the tarkov creator clean he did a really interesting video and i i've thought this for a long time about how tarkov really has no competitor no triple a game is going to try to take this on it's a really fun game um i would recommend you guys if you're pc players and want to get into it now is a really good time to get in and run around at the end of this wipe they're going to start doing crazy pre-wipe events so who knows what that's going to be but just to kind of get a feel for what it's going to be like and then hit the next wipe running so uh get into it now you're probably going to get destroyed by chads um i've been (laughs) killing a few timmy (laughs) i've been killing a few timmies and i feel kind of bad um but uh also met some cool ones we had a raid had a raid the other day i played with a couple viewers and we were all kitted out running around on woods and came across a couple timmies and voiped them and it was their very first raid oh god Um, (laughs) so we actually gave them a bunch of loot and then took them to the to the extract it was actually pretty cool oh good good that's so usually i'm the guy trusting people and i'm like all right dude and then i just get domed and lose. yeah 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 me too I asked Scav. I Scav Karma is garbage. How it's installed? It's a cool idea, but it it's really hard if you play the game like to try to increase your Scav Karma. Um, mm-hmm. That's another thing they're adding is Scav quests. So that'll be a cool way to be that's able to cool. increase your Scav Karma and also get some rewards that way. Don't know how many they're gonna have, but yeah, they're also adding uh, offline co-op. 
and that's only uh, for EO, I'm ex- EOD I'm members. I'm excited for that. Do you have the EOD edition? I I do. Yeah, I yeah, upgraded so it. Yeah, so we might need to we might need to practice run on that a little bit. That's been <laughs> something I've been waiting for for a long time. Is is to run it because I mean, when you're first starting out and need to learn the maps, uh, to have someone uh, who may be a more more familiar with that particular map or where the quests are and point things out for you instead of trying to do it live in raid is definitely going to be really helpful. Yeah, it it will help a lot for new people too, and you can kind of take them along and show them the ropes and stuff. Mm-hmm. They said they're only doing it for EOD members just because they're going to be the servers are going to be hosted on their servers, and they didn't want everything mm-hmm. to get clogged with a bunch of people doing right. offline co-op raids, which seemed kind of weird. I, maybe they'll try to work on it in the future making it like client side. I think that's yeah, what they like did, call they it. did say. I think they did say that that's just for the beginning, and then eventually they'll roll it out to all the other versions. Um, but just for now, exactly. They don't want to. They don't want to cram up all the servers right now. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um. So then the other thing is, let's see. Oh, they're adding three special slots. So like right now, you can just have like mm-hmm. the rangefinder, your compass in there. They're adding three slots for that. Uh, the next big thing that they're gonna they're talking about adding are flares. There's gonna be different ones to call an airdrops, like a medical one, a weapon one, and a supply one. Okay. Um, they're completely reworking uh, infrared and night vision, uh, and oh. IR IR flashlights are now gonna actually work as intended. Um, <laughs> <Got> <laughs> so that's pretty cool. They've been in the game for a while, and they don't. They don't really do anything um so now they'll actually be able to do stuff um i think i have a clip of that they'll eventually get to it um on there and then um I'm trying to think of what else i'm guilty of never doing a night raid so <laughs> what i i didn't notice i didn't notice the uh the irs and stuff like that not working but yeah i've never i've when I have had enough money for nods, I, I was so new and my, my first time playing, I was, I think I made it up to like level 30 and I was just like gear fear. I was like, I can't, I can't do a night raid. <laughs> they're, they're so actually I, I pretty cool. It. Um, they're, they're really cool. I was doing one. Uh, we did a couple of them on interchange to get some quests done. And the, there's just a couple times in video games where something happens and I'm like, this is badass. And I was playing Tarkov and the sun was coming down it was or the sun went down and the stars came out and we're moving across the bushes outside of interchange headed in and we all put our night vision down and it's just like looking over at your buddy's crouch walking at night it just That's was cool. just looks so cool and occasionally like it's pretty fun to put them on and go run around woods at night and stuff and look out for cultists and things like that mm-hmm. not a ton of people do it um so if if you if you go to woods which has kind of sneaky good loot um you can go into woods at night and actually like clean up loot wise if you kind of run the edges of the map and if you, if you get low on rubles um it's a really good really good way to get caught I did back become up. a huge a huge fan of woods uh i think like two wipes ago yeah they added that uh pmc camp and stuff like that it it adds a lot of, of places to get really good loot on that map so woods is one of my more go-to maps for sure yeah it's cool and they they, I think they upped the loot on it too. With That's this wipe, it feels like I found some really cool stuff. Um, and then uh, the generic, I'm I'm the same boat as you. I didn't really pay too much attention uh, to what they were going to do for movement, animation fixes, and improvements. Mm-hmm. Um, it, they did some teasers of it. They showed them on Twitter. They looked good. I'm not too crazy about them. Hopefully they can smooth stuff out. They said they worked on an update. The last update was to help decrease rubber banding and it really, really didn't. Um, oh no. Uh, um, it made it like shorter. I feel, so normally at the start of a raid and your your friends take off and start running and then it'll freeze and you're like, oh, here it goes. And then they'll just fast forward like, oh, like, no. a, like Looney Tunes for a little bit. It usually just happens at the beginning. So it doesn't really mm-hmm. happen later on when you when you're in combat, thank goodness. But now yeah, it's like right. it's just shorter, like it's a yeah. shorter freeze and a faster run, and then everything's good. So I, okay. they're they're working on it. It doesn't really affect gameplay because it just happens for us, like at the very beginning of the raid. And then the next thing they talked about is they gave us a lot of information um, about arena, um, more maps than I expected. Mm-hmm. Um, they want to do five or six maps by the time they release it to the public, and then he wants to keep doing more. Uh, more locations he said more different places and areas to go um so i thought that was really cool uh custom games he said will be in arena he said no ranked 
but he did say uh cuss which was a bummer to me i think ranked would be yeah, pretty cool be um uh like i ranked would be awesome too if like if you get a higher rank and you get maybe like an armband or something you can wear in the base game to like show That'd that that you're awesome and then when you die people will look at your armband and be like Haha, not so good now are you yeah right Steal and then thunder. he didn't say like how much customization would be in it um i did see that um the, he, something really weird i don't know if you caught this or heard about this or what you think of this he said towards the end of our match there can be a release of an ai cleaning squad for campers so like if there's just a person or two left they'll do like a like people will release a an ai squad of like cracked scabs that'll oh God, push people really? around and make people move like that's interesting yeah. so is it gonna is it did they say it's gonna be kind of like uh like uh like pe like rogues essentially i th i think so yeah something like that okay it's gonna be like they're gonna have good loot and all that stuff then right yeah yeah good guns and okay. loot and That'll be they good. said they said there'll be like some form of um looting but not mm. sure how much and that's kind of what i don't understand i was like how how will looting fit into that when it's mainly when it's mainly about that like, yeah i don't think we know like how you're gonna you're gonna level up you're gonna level up and unlock weapons and stuff like that but as far as how it's gonna work and and are you gonna be able to customize them the same as you would in, in base tarkov um i don't think they released any of that information yet so i think there's still a lot left uh for us to to find out but i think four maps sounds really good i'm definitely excited to jump in and like we talked about last time, this would be a good way to kind of warm up before you go on raids as well. Yeah, I think and, so. And uh, I saw, you know, I, I was, this is, I, there's a free to game, free to play game on uh, Steam right now, Hired Ops, which is basically the same studio, Battle State, and Nikita and then did this uh, before Tarkov. Um, but that's essentially, if you're trying, if you want to get into, Tarkov Arena before Tarkov Arena hired ops free on Steam. So that's something I'm gonna check out as well. It looks looks like something I missed back in the day, but that'd be a good way to uh to warm up and there's a lot of weapons in there. So I'm I'm expecting we're gonna see something kind of similar to that. Um, but more up to date with with all the uh Tarkov stuff. So do you remember if uh Contract Wars came before or after Hired Ops? I can't remember. Hired Ops was the sequel to Contract Wars, I believe. Okay, Contract Wars. I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. So I think in the chronological timeline, you'd have to we if you're listening to this and watching the stream, you have to look it up. But there's there's an order in which that goes in. It's like uh Contract Wars is the predecessor to the Tarkov in the timeline. And I think Hired Ops takes place right after Contract Wars, but there was like a huge battle between the PMCs and the ro and the uh, the bears and that's you know a huge war and that's kind of where we are now and the Tarkov is the aftermath of that so something there's some huge story behind it because they Battle State and Nikita and them all developed those and if you look at the gameplay or any of that you'll notice obviously there's a lot of reused assets um, or the similar assets not not reused because they're on a different engine but definitely everything looks the same which is good yeah it's all this stuff from like from Unity mm-hmm yep um so yeah i think that's pretty much all i had for that like i feel like i'm moving fast through stuff but like we haven't even got to modern warfare 2 yet um so oh the other thing that was cool was uh there's gonna be like a gambling mode or like the wagers where, you, where oh, you can okay you can bet rubles and i don't know if like you'll be able to spectate and bet on other people or if it's like you kind of bet someone else and then you guys go in and fight it out and whoever wins gets all the rubles I'm, I'm betting it might be something like that if you look at like wagers things like that in previous not even fps games i think i'm i'm thinking mainly like fighting games you would do stuff like that kind of like a king of the hill thing you'd make like bets and then go in and and fight it out to see who who would win so that'd be that'd be pretty cool yeah i think that was awesome I also got to um, say, I'm really curious what the what that grenade launch is going to be like, because that thing sounds like you only have six shots and it's really rare to pick up. You got to they have to do a lot to get it. But man, how how crazy is that thing going to be? <laughs> I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, I don't know. Some of that stuff is kind of frustrating, but they've they've talked about adding sketchy stuff too, like mm -hmm. um, 
trip mines and claymores and things like that i think could be really frustrating and annoying that they've talked about adding so yeah. they're always flirting with uh adding spammy like annoying stuff in my opinion but we'll see how it goes i guess all they have to do is make it super rare where you don't see it very often and yeah. if the rogue bosses are anything like the rogues i don't know how you're gonna it's gonna be tough yeah, take it die off. instantly instantly <laughs> yeah i can't figure it out uh, my I, buddy Hydra has been able to get in there and take him out and farm him for a little bit, but I, I can't. No, I, I always got killed. I think I almost made it out of there once, and I got killed by PMCs. I, I, I really am curious, though. They're adding you know, the grenade launchers and talking about trip mines and claymores. Um, we'll have to see what they do with the G36 as far as an MG variant, but really right now, that's one thing I've been waiting for for a while is LMGs to be added, because um, really the RPK-16, I guess, is the only one that's currently in the game. So... That's what things I was going like, to say. Things like the PKP Petchen Egg, um, probably the M249, things like that. Um, you look at the previous, like we just talked about, uh, Hired Ops, Contract Wars. They have a lot of LMGs in there, especially Hired Ops. You have like this big armored guy with a backpack that feeds the belt from the backpack. So you get like 300 rounds and heavy armor. So there's LMGs historically in these games. It's just a matter of when they're going to fully bring them over um i'm surprised they haven't done it yet but i guess from balancing it's definitely how are they going to yeah. do that but i'm excited for for some of those lmgs to come into the game eventually yeah and they have the ones uh the stationary ones right like that are mounted right. on top of like fortress and customs yeah, and some of the roofs yeah. on reserve so like they're they're in the game they just gotta gotta rip those things off the tripod but those are those those are those big beefy 50 cals that you one shot people i'm i i think it'd be awesome to have the pkp and some of those other ones too but we'll have to have just i mean eventually it's gonna come just a matter of when i think they obviously have other priorities besides adding lmgs i think so i don't know um nikita has said they want to add like almost every gun that they mm -hmm. can and to the game so uh, they're just gonna keep adding stuff i think the future honestly like people can say like the game sucks and the game's brutal and battle state does a bad job but i i think the future is really bright for tarkov i don't see them having a lot of competition and they have a roadmap we know there is a lot of content coming mm -hmm. and it's a one-of-a-kind game i i really enjoy yeah. it yeah most of the time <laughs> no one's yeah like we said no one's gonna ever compete with this we don't even have you know streets is still to come out eventually i think he did comment that it's 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 wrap it's getting close to, to being completely done so i don't think we'll see it this coming wipe but um you still have streets that's going to be huge and all the other weapons they're going to end up adding um there's a lot to co of content and you know there's no triple a studio that's ever going to dedicate this much time to a game so yeah it's eventually you know the end state of tarkov is going to be like peak gaming as far as i'm concerned yeah me too i mean and some of the stuff like um some of the attachments made by the the companies you can actually call the phone numbers that are on the game models and it's the actual business wow like, the that's amazing the phone. that's um, so cool so they have that stuff like to the t um so much to it there's also the map terminal um that's coming again i was thought the arena was part of terminal but they're thinking mm -hmm. the the word in russian means more like the terminal like the end so it's actually like a port it's like the last okay. port for tarkov it's actually more of like a harbor wow, type okay. area um more than it is an airport i think is like what what people think it's going to be but that's a whole nother map like we haven't even seen or don't know about that that's on the main page when you right. select like where you want to go raid so yeah and there's so the much end, the end state to that game i think he said in the past is for that whole that whole map to be open world so you would essentially, I think, like pick where you would spawn into of the current maps, but that's all supposed to be connected at one point. And right. you would travel, you could travel to all of those within one. So it would be it would be like one giant real open world map and you would do whatever you want. So that's the end state as far as the how those all those maps connect. So I'm you know, yeah, where we're gonna I, be in five years is gonna be crazy. Yeah, it's gonna be really cool to see where it goes. Um so yeah, I would definitely recommend if somebody's thinking about it, this is a good time to get in. And again, this is kind of what I did this wipe. At the end of the last wipe, I just, I got into it with like a month or two left and I was just getting destroyed, but I was just getting used to it. And then I was yeah. able to hit the ground running on the next wipe and kind of was familiar with stuff. And it was quite a, quite a lot of fun because this wipe, they really slowed down progression with taking a lot of stuff out of the, 
out of the flea market and stuff like that so people were still like several months into the white i mean you still see people with class four armor from time to time mm -hmm. so so it's pretty cool rather than everybody looks like a flipping juggernaut out there with their yeah. Thor armor and stuff exactly so no it's pretty cool i i'm excited for it i think they want to try to do like persistent servers too so we're like the servers keep going and then you kind of drop in and then leave at certain times and it just keeps running yeah people so and I think that'd be really cool because one of the things that sucks uh, for new players and even me like i don't have a very good grasp on this yet is where people should be so uh, the really good players know where people spawn and the routes they take to pois mm -hmm. yeah. so they they head you off at the pass like they know where you're going to be and they're waiting for you yep and there's a lot of predictability there that i think will go away if they can do persistent servers yeah that exactly that'd be really good i, I used to have the, i used to have all the maps on customs memorized so i would I would know when I can push certain areas off the rib and when not to. Um, but yeah, essentially it's going to be an, an MMO FPS. So a massive multiplayer online first person shooter eventually. Um, and that's, that's like, since I was in middle school, a game that that's the kind of game I've wanted to play. So that'd be really cool. Yep. It'll be, it'll be really interesting to see. I hope they can, they can keep it up and get it there. Um, Definitely. All right. Are you ready for the big one? <laughs> i'm ready all right let's talk about modern warfare 2 i have on here info and guns um i actually watched your video about all the guns in the trailers and stuff like that um i kind of have a bullet list of the information that we got um mm -hmm. i don't know what you want to start with or talk about yeah um, we can start we can start with the info if you want for sure okay um let me pull up it um, so the first thing I have is it's going to focus on single player, multiplayer, and co-op. Um, I just added this. I saw this the other day, um, or I saw it yesterday. I think the last or yeah, last week it was already um, the third highest selling game on Steam for the week. Yeah. So, yep. so pre-orders. I saw that. That's crazy um, because you have to think a lot of people are probably still going to just stay within within uh battle net right because that's where like yeah. all the pre-order like when you launch the game like now to play warzone and you mm -hmm. hit the pre-order button it goes through that so it's, it feels like there's a lot of people that are going to still be on bnet so for it to be steam number three um is is actually pretty yeah, that's wild big. i'm curious what it was on uh playstation store and xbox as well because oh um, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm on playstation i pre-ordered you know a because i'm really excited to play it and b it's like partially part of my job so <laughs> but regardless i would have pre-ordered it but yeah i'm sure it's gonna be you know you're this is gonna be easily the best-selling game of the year best-selling game in the cod franchise and it's gonna top all the systems i i guarantee it so yep. it's gonna be big I would definitely agree. Um, some of the new stuff they're talking about adding is a uh, new movement to where you can ledge hang off helicopters and still have yeah. your pistols. So you can hang on ledges. And like I saw uh, Jack Frags in his video talked about being able to jump from like vehicle to vehicle and hang off of like the bottom of a helicopter and have your pistol out. Um, so that's cool. The movement is something that is going to be pretty important to me. Mm -hmm. um, not 100% sure if it's going to be like crazier and faster, like I'm a little bit like boomer. So like the current slide cancel bunny hop meta is like a little bit frustrating to me. So I hope they tone that down a little bit. I think we talked about that quite yeah. a bit last week. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, diving to the ground is one. So it's like dolphin diving back, but it's... you won't, they did say you won't be able to. So it's, it, they're calling it a dolphin dive. I think the creators are calling it that, but you won't be able to, um, they're doing it the right way, so you won't be able to like shoot while doing it. There's going to be an animation in there, so you can't use your weapon while you're going prone like that. You know, thank God. So it's not technically a dolphin dive, but they're going to break it up so you can't dive straight to prone. But there's going to be a delay before you can even raise your weapon. So that's okay, cool. at least good news. Okay, cool. And then yeah, because that would be. I was like, is it back? <laughs> um please no <laughs> it sounds like a lot went into swimming and around like water combat and locomotion i guess is the word for moving around um swimming is supposed to be big you can use your pistol and your melee uh weapon under and in water mm -hmm. um water actually nerfs guns i guess it slows down bullets and decreases damage when you're shooting through water yeah, so there's going to be like actual, and they did this a lot with Modern Warfare, but they're obviously you know expanding upon that and taking it more in depth. Uh, the ballistics for the water, I guess they created a whole a whole code base around it. So when you're in the water shooting, 
in, if you're in the water shooting into the water, you're going to have certain ballistics, especially depending on how far underwater your, your opponent is. And then if you're shooting from water, you know, under what you're underwater and you're shooting out from somebody above the water, there's going to be ballistics involved there. And then if I'm out of the water shooting into somebody underwater, there's going to be ballistics there. So your, your bullets are, are going to obviously, um, you know, it, like in real life, if you shoot into the water, your bullet almost like instantly stops. Um, I think they've done like some myth busters on that. Like you can't, you, your bullet, unless you have a specific weapon for it, isn't going to pen anything underwater. Um, so they're taking some real life type of ballistics involved there. So you'll still be able to shoot people, but it sounds like your bullets are going to travel and deviate um, much different than they would outside of water, which, you know, thank God, if they're going to add that system, at least there's, there's something there. So you're kind of protected if you're under the water, it's going to be more difficult to to be killed. That's pretty cool. I wonder how crossbow bolts will work because arrows actually travel pretty good underwater still. So yeah. that'll that'll be that'll be something to test out. That'll be pretty interesting. And if you're, I guess I did hear if you're far enough underwater, like your visibility will become, you know, if I'm looking down at you from the surface and you're you're the further you go, the harder it's going to be able to see. So it's not going to be like the uh, the tray arch um system of water where it's just clear water and you can shoot um and see everything it's going to be more it sounds like it's going to be more based in reality whereas uh, there's the ballistics and you're not going to be able to see people that well the further down they are yeah it sounds like they're going to try to make water more of a part of combat and i saw a lot mm -hmm. of it in the warzone 2 map um i think also lethals interact with the water too Mm -hmm. So like you'll be able to throw like a prox mine on the water and they said uh said it floats like in the water and stays on that's top cool. kind of like a yeah. depth charge. Um that's cool. which is pretty cool. So it's like what but everybody really wonders is how's the fish AI, you know? Like does it <laughs> that's what everybody really wonders. And shipwrecks, I think Jack says something about that. But I do think they did say that they want water to be primarily used for like flanking purposes, I believe is what what I heard. Um, and that gives me flashbacks to like Bad Company 1 and 2. Some of those rush maps, we would always flank the water. We'd go around the water and just come up behind on the objectives for rush. So I think that's that's really cool. I should add not only to, you know, Warzone 2 aside, but DMZ, if this mode actually exists, that'd be really cool. But just for your typical modern warfare multiplayer maps, you know, SND and the other game modes, um, to have a team flank you know, go underwater and un potentially undetected is, is huge. It's going to add a, a whole new, a whole new way to play the game and a whole new dynamic, which is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. It's going to be pretty cool. And also for like escaping a gunfight, like if you're in a gunfight right. and you know that you're kind of losing it and want to get out of there, maybe you can jump in the water and try to get mm -hmm. away and, and, and regain a little bit. Yeah. Um, oh, the other thing I didn't even, <laughs> I'm terrible. This is bad journalism. Um, I didn't even ask, what'd you think of the trailer? Like, I should have started with that. I'm awful at this. Yeah, I mean, the trailer and the gameplay. Um, I, I was able to live stream the trailer, and I, I freaking loved it. And <laughs> the gameplay, it's, I didn't get to live stream that, but uh, I watched it live, and it, it was awesome. So everything I saw, I'm loving it. I, I I didn't see anything wrong with anything I saw. This is basically a Modern Warfare 2019 improved, and that's all I want. You know, as long as I can get some modern weapons, the lighting, they had a lot of details, which I'll do a video on that that were in the gameplay that they've added with the engine update. Um, overall, 10 out of 10, take my money. I just want a modern game that I can use modern weapons in. <laughs> so, yeah. and Ground War is back. So, I mean, you know, Battlefield 2042 is what it yep. is. Um, <laughs> yeah. We'll have Ground War, so. I have I have that to talk about, too. I, I honestly thought the trailer was pretty bad um really I, yeah I'm curious, I, I'm curious why i didn't like it um i thought the animations looked kind of like a step back i thought it looked pretty rigid and i didn't see although like the new stuff with the 2019 engine looked really good i just didn't see a big graphical improvement that i hoped for that's yeah. probably on me like i probably built it up in my head that oh man this thing's gonna look so realistic so that's probably on me and then the trailer with like how they do like that zoom in thing with the beats of the music with the drum do 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 oh, like yeah. all that so i'm like over that stuff and i thought it was just a really generic trailer that being said i don't really give a shit like yeah. 
we we, we learned the very hard way that trailers right. don't always reflect right, games right very so, unfor- yeah 120 dollars the hard way yeah <laughs> yeah so i i don't really care that i didn't really get into it that much um i'm still really excited for it some of these things that we're going to continue to talk about have me have me pretty excited i did i liked i liked the gameplay that like we're like what we're showing now mm-hmm. i liked that a lot more yeah. i was more hyped about that than the actual like you know, reveal there trailer. were some good spots in the trailer that you were just playing there um like with the night vision maps and stuff like that you saw like some 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 of the views were through nods and they i think i read that they they actually had real soldiers go out and like airsoft and they monitored their movements and tracked it so there's a there's gonna be a movement overhaul with the way your characters move which is modeled after real world soldiers which is really cool um but that a lot of the stuff from the trailer i agree some of it was like generic and you know your, your typical call of duty over the top stuff but there was those 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 parts of it that had me like, oh my god, this looks like this looks like some of those Sicario night night vision portions that we saw in one and two, um, and it it looked really exciting for. But I can definitely see what you mean with some of the animations being a little bit rigid. Definitely, um, I don't think it was as good as a trailer as Modern Warfare twenty nineteen's uh, yep. launch trailer that they had, but. I think it did the it did the job for me personally, but yeah, I agree. The gameplay was was better uh, than the trailer for sure. But I, I I do I do have to be uh self aware and notice that I had it pre- I had pretty high expectations going into mm-hmm. it. But yeah. I'm also know that like it doesn't really matter. The trailer could be terrible and the game looks awesome still. So right, right, yeah, not 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 too concerned. But I, I was a little let down by the trailer. But I can who, see that. I can see that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sorry to get, I'm terrible with this, to go back to like the game itself. Um, yeah, let's see, do I have anything? Um, yeah, so vehicles, I guess the next thing um, that I was going to talk about is like vehicles and that falls right into what you were talking about with ground war coming back, Mm -hmm. um, taking another shot at doing a battlefield with large scale battles. I think they're going to be even bigger. I thought ground war in 2019 didn't play that well. I thought it was a little hectic. Um, I agree. But I but I was really enjoying Battlefield 5 at the time. Um I feel like if you're someone that plays Battlefield at that time at, at that time at least Battlefield did it better. Like if I wanted to look right. big large scale vehicle battle um Battlefield felt way more refined. It felt mm-hmm. better balanced. I don't know if that's the case anymore. So it's going to be really interesting to see uh what they do, what improvements they made, what they learned. Um, where the maps are going to come from um, it sounds like they're doing a lot with vehicles so there's going to be um, you'll be able to jump out of vehicles you'll be able to lean out and shoot it'll be kind of like yep. PUBG, where you can shoot 360 so you can lean out of a window and yep. shoot all the way around right now it, as you guys know like if you hop in a vehicle and shoot you're confined to just a little bit of a window right. um, so then uh, the other thing vehicles will have detailed destruction and when they blow up the husks will be left over so like and there's the, gonna be i think like rolling effects right so not only can you shoot out tires um but if you blow up a vehicle like that you know typically in war zone and, and ground war etc currently like that vehicle blows up it's a non-factor but in, in what we're going to be seeing in modern warfare 2 and war zone 2 if you blow that vehicle up it'll it'll tumble and that debris of the vehicle can still kill people um and you can take out the tires and, and as far as animations like I heard there's an animation where you can go up and like open the door and shoot the person and stuff like that. So it's going to be, uh, they're taking into account. I think a lot of the things that they saw with the gameplay from specifically Warzone, um, jumping on the, you know, grabbing the hoods, opening the door, shooting like through the windows and stuff like that. A lot of cool animations that you'll be able to put yourself in. It sounds like from what we're hearing, but just blowing out the tires, I think is awesome. If you want to slow down a vehicle, I mean, look at the Bertha's, those big trucks in Warzone. How much of a pain they were um if i have a if i have an amr anti-material rifle it's a 50 cal and i can blow out the tires or disable the engine block i mean that's that's huge <laughs> give me a 50 cal all day yeah that's gonna be pretty cool and honestly the vehicle mechanics sound more like PUBG to me with the leaning and shooting 360 yeah. and then shooting yeah. out the tires that's something that's in PUBG and that mm-hmm. changes how the vehicles handle and stuff like that um, so I think that's really cool and and maybe that's what they're going for like i said i thought the original ground war was like a little bit unrefined and kind of rough and hectic and maybe they're going mm-hmm. for refining that it sounds like they've put a lot of work into at least vehicles um yeah. so maybe they could they could do some good stuff with uh with ground war and kind of kind of go after some of those disenfranchised <laughs> battlefield fans yeah. 
Absolutely. Um, we'll talk about a couple more game modes i think that are pretty exciting i'm hoping there's a lot of stuff going on a lot of stuff being talked about i hope they're not uh spreading themselves too thin um but we'll we'll see i they've got a lot of people working on it they do um, a lot of a lot of studios they know this is their their they know they have an opportunity you know unfortunately where battlefield is but they knew this was going to be big before battlefield even came out so um, dedicating all the all their development teams to this they know this is going to be massive and i think that the plan is with this cod 2.0 as we hear more about it is going to be kind of the the i guess uh platform of call of duty the launch pad of call of duty that we're going to see going forward for the next couple of years so it's going to yep. be a big title i thought that was pretty interesting too i had that at the end um they did confirm that it is going to be the next engine for everything so it's always yeah. been like i feel like sledgehammer and infinity ward games kind of look similar um a little mm -hmm. bit different and then Treyarch games always have like their own like feel and look to the engine and yeah, stuff and it sounds like it's all going to be kind of on the infinity ward engine so that'll be pretty cool i think i like it i think it looks it looks pretty good so mm -hmm. i think that's a good thing hopefully that helps with development hopefully that gets us some more content yeah um, absolutely it sounded like they were going to do a lot of stuff with AI. Again, this is like PTSD flashbacks to what they told us with 2042, saying like the <laughs> AI is new and improved and it's going to be awesome and you'll be able to play in servers that are full all the time no matter what. Uh, some of the things that they've said about AI is they have better room detection of movement. Mm -hmm. If you're observing them, they look more realistic. Again, me trying to think back, there's a lot of AI in Tarkov and I mm -hmm. don't feel like they're very good. I don't think, I can't think of a shooter where I'm like, that AI is super good um but yeah. I, maybe sandstorm i don't know um sandstorm tar the, the, the yeah the ai is actually i would say the ai in sandstorm is really good besides like the one shot you know they do some weird stuff with heavy sniper rifles where they'll just dome you around corners which is annoying but I, <laughs> if you try and play hardcore checkpoint on sandstorm um it's very difficult <laughs> i actually played sandstorm last night it's really weird i play it like once every three months and i actually played it last <laughs> night it was still pretty fun um it is they have warzone 2 will have a lot of ai it sounds like mm -hmm. excuse me i don't know how people feel about that i'm generally an anti-ai person it fits well in tarkov um just because it's a lot more slower paced and mm -hmm. they kind of fit I, into the feel of it but i really think i mean we're seeing a little we have have seen a little bit of ai in current warzone but i think what they said um for war for modern warfare 2 warzone 2 whatever is that they can have what 150 players and 300 AI, something like counts, counts yeah. like that to have a stable server. So um, it sounds like in Warzone 2, the AI is going to be guarded, guarding uh, strongholds and things like that, which you can get into at a later time when that's actually confirmed. Um, but also, I mean, to me, this screams they didn't confirm anything with DMZ, but it screams they're going for this DMZ mode because you just said, you know, Tarkov has a lot of AI. Um, but then to be playing around with that much much AI seems like there's something outside of Warzone that they may be cooking up. Yep. Yeah, I think so too. We'll see if that comes. I'm really interested to see if that comes to fruition with everyone talking yeah. about it. It sounds yeah. like there's going to be another mode released down the line, like maybe early the next year in 2023. Mm -hmm. And that could be the DMZ. Um, but yeah. I, yeah, I saw the same figures with like 300 AI on the Warzone 2 map. And then we, we talked earlier about strongholds as well. So there are places with a lot of AI that you can decide if you want to take him out or not, and you'll be rewarded for, I'm assuming, loot and perks and, and stuff yeah. like that. So yep. that's pretty cool. And then uh, the 6v6 maps are supposed to be a little bit smaller than 2019 um, all across the globe. I think that's good. I'm looking forward to playing some Search and Destroy, um, a couple <laughs> game modes that we'll get into a little bit later too. Some of the new ones sound really cool, and I, I hope they take off and keep players because some of the stuff that's going on sound a lot more like rainbow six siege which i'm a massive fan of which the season yeah. quiet the new season quietly comes out tomorrow for rainbow six does siege. it really wow yeah. i haven't been following too much rainbow six siege but yeah that's that's go figure yeah it's actually tomorrow i didn't hear um, anything about it damn <laughs> right i know right um so there's like a tactical camera that you can throw that's kind of typical remotely controlled like siege um a drill charge like fuse uh, where you can put grenades on one side of the wall and it shoots grenades to the other. It's side yep. of a nerf to campers. 
uh, an EMP charge that can take down vehicles. So that'll be very handy in ground war. Um, a remote decoy, kind of like Alibi from Rainbow Six Siege, like a hologram of a person that you can put up mm -hmm. in a window to try to fool enemies. Um, yeah, so a lot of that stuff sounds like it, which kind of feeds into a prisoner rescue mode, which yep. sounds a lot like Siege Hostage. It does, and I'm I'm super excited about that because I I do like search and destroy, but having an objective like a hostage, I think, is just a little bit more immersive for me, and I think you need to play it a little bit differently too. So I'm really pumped for that because I love, I love, I love the this the search and destroy type modes in siege, but also the hostage modes. So I think uh, I'm excited to see what they do with that. And, and speaking of siege, I think I thought always thought siege did. Did the what I don't know what the game was called in Siege, but it's essentially search and destroy, right? So mm -hmm. I thought they yeah, did that bomb. perfectly. Yeah. So I thought they did that mode. I I was like, this is what search should be. Um, I'm curious. They're adding this hostage mode. Are they? And it sounds like they're adding these Rainbow Six Siege esque type uh, things to the game. I'm curious if they're going to be refining some of those game modes more like Siege, which is kind of what it sounds like from what I'm hearing. Yeah, which gets me pretty excited. I mean, it sounded like there'll be like a little bit of a preparation phase where the, phase where the mm -hmm. enemy team can like kind of get ready. And I mean, uh, if you can fuse the hostage like Siege, if you can accidentally kill the hostage with the fuse charge, I'm in. Yeah. Like that, that's the way. Yeah, I I think that'll be that might that may be one of my modes. To be honest, uh, I love those tactical modes, and and you know people are gonna play those kind of modes differently also than your standard six v six, which is what I always appreciate. So that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I hope it's not like well, I get like the cyber attack mode from 2019 was kind of a new tactical type mode. I don't think it really took off too crazy. Um, and then nah. there's a. There's a knockout mode, which is like the last person alive with like the flag wins. It's kind of like a last, like you just try to keep the flag and like whoever ends with it wins is kind yep. of, eh, I'm not as excited about that nah, one, but yeah, the, probably but, won't play that one, <laughs> <laughs> but the prisoner, the prisoner rescue, uh, sounds pretty cool. And I, I'm really interested to see what they do. Um, Same. this sounds again, like another game where like, it could almost have something for everybody. Like where you got the big battles, the arena mode, the war zone, the DMZ, and then, um, also like these tactical modes, like search and destroy. If you still want that, that excitement and the tension of those late rounds, no respawn, um, mm -hmm. it could be there with prisoners. So that's pretty that's cool. That's what it sounds like. And that's smart by them is bring in, bring in every audience you can from prominent FPS games. And it sounds like that's exactly what they're doing. So uh, I think there will be, like you said, there will be something for everybody is what it sounds like. And if you don't want to, if you don't want to grind in sweaty standard 6v6 modes, you can play these other modes. You know, if you're coming over from Siege, you can have your Siege mode. If you're coming over from Tarkov, hopefully you have your Tarkov mode, uh, things like that. So it's, I'm pretty excited to see what they do with these modes and, and play them. And then... Of course, they say graphics, sounds, and animations are all uh, proving. And then, mm -hmm. yeah, I think the last thing to talk about is the weapons. A lot of weapons. They said there's going to be um, there's going to be ten attachments with a real world feel. Uh, weapon platforms, which is right up your alley, um, which is pretty cool. Where if you unlock some attachments with the base platform and then you upgrade it, like you were talking about in your video, the MP5 to the HK53. Mm -hmm. is that what it is yeah so yep. some of those some of those attachments that fit on both if you unlocked it for the base mp5 i'm thinking you'll keep it for the for the hk53 as well on those yeah. other platforms and then there's also like attachment tuning um jack frags in his video mentioned uh where you can tweak the barrel uh with like weight to give you more uh velocity and stuff like that but mm -hmm. the but then it'll decrease like plus and minuses it'll decrease the ads speed so um right yeah exactly versus like better recoil or faster ads there's going to be pros and cons with those which um i've heard some some concerns about it from some of the, the guys that saw it at the events um to me i it sounds like a good thing because you're gonna have to choose you know do you want faster ads and heavier recoil or do you want better recoil and slower ads um that's been something that i've seen you know current war zone is a problem where you have these these very low recoil weapons um so this is kind of what i want to see i want to see players making a choice as to how they're going to approach situations and you, you know you can't have every you can't have your cake and eat it too so it's good yeah and it's almost like don't 
there's guns there are there's attachments and things and weapons that have no downside right like right now like mm-hmm. the stg 44 right now it oh deletes you it has really good handling and it has mm-hmm. absolutely zero recoil i think mm-hmm. they need to make it if there's a gun that deletes you it needs to have some recoil so you have to learn how to use it you can make you your think. gun more powerful but you're going to make it harder to use mm-hmm. yep you would think so hopefully that's what they end up doing with us and you're right the scg is i can't believe they haven't fixed it by now it's crazy goes back to our talk last time about selling bundles which seems to obviously must be the reason because it's been it's been over eight weeks it's just been broken but yeah exactly hopefully if infinity Ward stays the primary studio in charge of this game um that's what we'll see is you know you need to make a conscious choice as to how you want to to have your weapon work um and if your that particular weapon platform doesn't do the job you need to switch weapons so i think that's that's good because there's some of those guns right now that just do everything so Clip that and send it to Raven. Let me get, <laughs> get their shit together. Um, I also have pulled up. I don't know if you want to see this. I can pull it up on the screen. Uh, the the frame from your video uh, where you kind of mocked up on a Modern mm-hmm. Warfare gun what the slots mm-hmm. would be. Um, so yeah, I, and I, is and that I cool spelled mu- I sp- yeah, go for it. I spelled muzzle wrong. Someone pointed that out to me, but um, definitely oh, nice. not going back and re reprocessing the video for that. But yeah, dude, I didn't even yeah. notice that until you said it. Uh, Should have said someone, it. Someone, someone told me, and, and I was just like, "Well, you know, I already put it too late now. I can't." <laughs> yeah, I've done that. Unfortunately, too. can't do anything about it. But yeah, that's essentially what it's going to be. So, from what I'm hearing, I, you know, I didn't get, I didn't get the early invite to go see this stuff. But from the guys that I've talked to that did, um, the, your top, your top row of those six is going to be your attachments, and then um, the bottom row is your weapon parts. So you'll be able to choose apparently three of the attachments on the top row. And, and I'm guess it sounds like four of four of the parts on the bottom. So um, in each of those attachments will have that slider that you're talking about. So this, I think, is good because you have all your attachments. There's six there. You need to choose how you're going to which three you're going to be using. So obviously, like, I'm going to want an optic probably, right? Your ammo is something that's, I think, really interesting that they're bringing over from Vanguard. This is kind of what we talked about last time is if I'm running a 5.56 five, by 45 weapon, you know, what kind of ammo am I going to have? Is it going to be armor piercing? You know, is it going to be the M855 if you're if you're a Tarkov player? Um, is it going to be hollow point? Is it going to be a tracer? So you'll be able to choose the ammo. I'm curious how they'll name that. If it's going to be, it sounds like they want to do everything very real world. So will they name the specific round or will it just be a generic armor piercing? We'll have to see. Um, but that's cool. Laser. So if I were looking at this right now, I'd, I'd probably, you know, you can see how my weapon's built. I have, you know, the muzzle, laser, optic. In that case, I wouldn't be able to have an underbarrel like I have here. And then you have to choose four of the, you know, four of the bottom. So what barrel, what type of magazine is it going to be a standard 30 round? Is it going to be a casket of a 60? Um, what kind of receiver? If I'm doing a receiver, I can probably use base receiver. And receivers, I think, are going to be allow you to convert the whole weapon. This is where we talk about platforms. So um, and then the stock. But with that receiver replacement, that sounds like that's going to be directly based on some of your choices for the attachments and the the parts on the bottom row. I think those are going to be locked. So if you choose, if I choose a specific receiver, I'm going to be limited with some of the attachments that I can use based on that receiver and vice versa. So there's, that's your trade-off pro and con approach to this, which I think is, is something that's obviously lacking in the current war zone, current modern warfare. So that's really, really good. And, and it offers a lot of customization, which is awesome <laughs> yeah that's really cool and then to think that on top of all these attachments then you can go in and actually individually tweak them too, like change like weights and yeah. things like that so um that's pretty cool um i hope it works out and uh they balance it right like i said with with some risk reward or not risk reward, some like pluses and minuses so like if you make it yeah you can make it really strong and high damage but like you're gonna have right. to learn how to use it and it might have crappy handling and you're gonna have mm-hmm. to be smart with your positioning and you can't just w key everywhere right Um, and i i hope there's some restrictions too i mean i i i don't know if i mentioned it in one of my videos but as far as that slider i'm curious if it's going to be anywhere within that range you can tweak it or if you're going to have like preset destinations it would seem to me that they would have it some preset markers in there that you're allowed to do because for balancing purposes um, I guess you could do it either way, but it would seem easier if there's like some presets, right? That, that way they can easily track what, what you're doing and it makes it a little bit easier on the user 
um, instead of like watching a video and you know make your muzzle attachment mi- minus. 32.25 <laughs> things like that so yeah i have to see what they do with that yeah and honestly why doesn't buff get invited to these events i put hashtag <laughs> hashtag invite buff on twitter everybody yeah. use it spam it it's on the it's on the ticker it's on the toxic ticker let them know we got to get him in there um, probably because i probably because i'm i'm not super nice on my twitter i gotta calm down on twitter hey, so i i, I, I know what you mean crazy. i know what you mean um so yeah and with the with a classic bodybuilder the bodybuilder water jug yeah that's coming right. in stay hydrated gallon number boys. two gallon number two today thanks did you get a, did you get a workout in today i did which is why i, w- I was you know arrived when i did so yeah nice. I, got a crazy, was it- I was supposed to have a, like a rest day and i decided to do I posted the part of the workout on my Instagram. I did like an insane workout. So I, was it be, international chest day or like a whole body thing? It, it, I did. I actually did uh, my quads and chest. So I ended up doing. I did like a. It's more of a pump workout. I did like a stupid workout. So I'm gonna be broken tomorrow. <laughs> mm. I did. I did the standard Monday chest and tries today. There you go. Why not? So, so yeah, I, I threw it in it there. I didn't. That's crazy. <laughs> I I don't know. You're workouts scare me um so yeah if you guys are interested in this stuff like even more in depth sorry we got off on a tangent um i had to give him a hard time about his water bottle um (laughs) if you guys are interested in this check out buff's channel links are description show notes whatever wherever you're at on whatever platform because he goes really in depth with how the weapons are going to work he also talks about weapons that were in um the the trailer as well um so if you're interested in the guns of modern warfare roman numeral two please check out his channel like it's all there in depth uh super well put together visual aids and everything so it does awesome job of putting this all in one spot so so watch it now (laughs) wait no after this Um, this, so it along those same lines was there was there anything in those uh video or in weapons that you were surprised or excited about that you got from that reveal trailer yeah i mean i first off i think we got really lucky and i was able to get every single weapon out of those and shout out to to my community helped me out a little bit on my discord i think the only thing we missed was a famas which had a very very low res like one frame someone caught it and you can only tell if it's a famas because it has that 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 like up charging handle under the hand under that the uh carrying handle so it sounds like there's going to be a famas as well but um that's kind of a given with a modern warfare but yeah i mean all the weapons there's i mean the thing i'm most surprised about i guess the first thing i'm I'm most excited about is a scar light or a mark 16 that's something that i i was wishing would have been in modern warfare 2019 as a conversion and it wasn't so a scar light you saw that use that was a one that was that ar that was used in the actual gameplay um for the, the dark water mission you had the vector and then you had the mark 16 or the scarlight firing 556 so that's exciting that that's going to be there and that's kind of where we get into the talk about platforms right so um if if anyone saw at the end of those trailers like pre-order bonus you get the fjx cinder pack that there's only one screenshot we have of that cinder pack for the weapon vaults it sounds like this is going to be a huge thing going into this game as far as customers. Well, it at least gives us an a, a insight into what the customization is going to look like. And as far as what I was surprised to see, um, the M4 platform, there's an AR-57 and, and a Fight Light MCR. I saw the, S, the Sailor Arms Industry Gray Rifle and some sort of AR-10 platform all out of what looks like just a standard M4 for a conversion. So if anyone's not familiar with what an AR-57 is, it's really pr- pronounced the AR-57. And this takes that FN, the same exact round and magazine as a P90, that FN-57. And it's that, yeah, what you're showing there on screen, it's that very, um, it's the top upper receiver, or the, the, yeah, the upper receiver, if you go up to, it's the very top one at the top of the image there. That allows you to put a P90 magazine on top there. You fit a P90 mag in there, and it feeds <laughs> it feeds P90 ammo into your M4 platform. So that's an FN5 or an AR57. That's going to be crazy. And then the second one there, directly above the M4 that you see in the center of the screen, is a uh, Fight Light MCR or an Ares uh, 16, which is a belt-fed AR platform. <laughs> so it's essentially a belt-fed M4. Um, it's it's 
you can see all the different attachments here. It's going to, I don't even know how I'm going to cover all this content because the, the <laughs> conversions you're going to make is going to be stupid. I'm, it's going to be a busy two years um, just by what we're seeing here. You know, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's at least nine different weapons I can see that I can make here on screen. And that's not even all of them. So it's going to yeah. be crazy, but definitely the FN57 and the the area 16 or the fight light mcr are the two that surprised me the most because i had i had never really seen those um in a game before i think the area 16 or the fight light was maybe in a battlefield as the um the aws i want to say it's a very similar weapon but yeah belt fed m4 uh that's crazy so <laughs> be a lot of customization with this it's gonna be a lot of fun yeah that it's wild and i, I guess where they said like the weapon vault is it gonna mm -hmm. be like that's like your weapon vault is where you go for that platform and then you pick all the yeah. parts that you want it to change what you want it like, looks like we don't really have all the information on it but it looks like a weapon vault will be so since i pre-ordered this edition because obviously i want to get my hands on this right away and cover it but the vault itself it looks like it's i i think it's going to be tied to a blueprint almost or a blueprint and a weapon because you can see all those have the same uh, like color scheme to them, right? So um, it sounds like that may be for a particular blueprint. You get in all the attachments for those blueprints. Um, so it might be a, a way to retain the cosmetics of blueprints, potentially. Have to wait and see what they what they do with that. But yeah, um, I'm, it sounds like basically by pre-ordering getting this, this Volt for the Cinder... The blueprint itself is probably the cinder and you can create you get all the attachments for the m4 out of that day one so we could probably build everything for the m4 day one uh that retains this specific red and black cosmetic yeah you're gonna be busy it's job security it's kind of daunting <laughs> it's kind of daunting it's gonna be a lot to cover yeah. here but uh yeah i was really surprised with the ar57 and the flight light M mcr that's that's really cool to see. And I think we have a, one of the barrels I think I see there. You see uh, there's a Salem Arms Industry gray rifle barrel, which we saw that barrel as a blueprint in Modern Warfare 2019. There's also a 50 cal Beowulf barrel there is what it looks like. Could be a 457 or a 458 SOCOM. But yeah, and you can see some butt stocks there for like that you would probably put on something like an SR25 or an AR-10 platform. And there's different lowers. So it's going to be, it's going to be nuts. When we go back to, those new uh, gunsmith, you know, we have the attachments on top and the parts on the bottom. When I choose receiver, I'm curious if that's going to then branch out to an upper and a lower and how that's going to work. Because clearly we're seeing uppers and lowers receivers here on the screen. So um, there's going to be very, very in-depth customization, which is going to be crazy. Yep. So now it looks cool. So it looks like they just, it's like gunsmith 2.0. It's like the next mm -hmm. evolution of the gunsmith. So I I think that's that's the best case scenario. Um, yeah, all the weapons I saw. I mean, you had, you know, your typical vector P ninety, um, like the the yeah. gun. Nothing nothing caught me um, off guard other than the ones you mentioned. Um, right. The F, the the five seven uh, M four platform is really cool, mm -hmm. and then the uh, the five five six MP five the HK fifty three. Yeah, um, that'd be, was super that'd be really super cool. Neat. And it's gonna be interesting to see how they handle some of that stuff with like handling and stuff. Does it handle like an SMG and hit like five five six? Like it could be strong. Right. I'm well, sure. I think I think that's why they're adding actual receivers this time around. So instead of retaining the base stats of like the M4, if I if I switch up the receiver to make it fire nine millimeter, right in that case, um, essentially that receiver's stats I would think would kind of switch it to an SMG type based on. And hopefully then it would restrict some of your other attachments. So it keeps it in kind of that buffer zone that they want to keep you in, I'm assuming. Um, one more honorable mention for weapons is um, anybody that follows me and follows me for a while, AK-105. So <laughs> we, I, Crash, I know you know the AK-105 from Tarkov, but finally we get a modern AK platform. So I think we'll be able to probably make an Alpha AK uh, to the, the Vickers Alpha AK. So um I mean, that sold me. I saw the AK-105. That's all I needed, man. That could be the worst game ever as long as there's a modern AK. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. And essentially, they're going to have to, right? Like, if they're going yeah. with the platform route, they're going to have to add all this stuff. 
um to make the different kinds of platforms and generations and yeah and stuff with the different calibers and springs and lowers with the fire rates and stuff or the fire mm -hmm. modes like they're gonna yep. have to add all that stuff to make it worth it like they don't mm -hmm. want to do i don't feel like they want to say hey we're doing all these weapon platforms and there's like two different ones like you can use a 545 and a 762 now they're gonna add the 556 one they're gonna add all mm -hmm. these updated ones so that's gonna be pretty cool yeah, um, and I, I think that's going to branch off from like, you know, you can, like we talked about platforms, you'll be able to probably create any AK platform out of that, potentially even, even though the AN-94 Abacon isn't essentially based, uh, it's a Nikonov platform, it's not, but it's kind of cosmetically the same, so I wonder if we'll be able to make uh, the AN-94 out of that, but uh, maybe a 107, and anyone that's not familiar with that, the 107 is, uh, I think it has a fast rate of fire of around 700 to 750 rounds per minute. And you can look that up on, on YouTube, the AK-107. Very rare, not used. It's kind of in the same category as an AEK-971. It, it's just too complex and expensive to mass produce. But the AK-107 has a counterbalance recoil system. So you can full auto that thing, and it doesn't move, which... <laughs> uh that's cool so if you're gonna if you're gonna have weapons in warzone and cod that don't have recoil let's have them based on actual um counterbalance systems like that you know because there's a bunch of them out there so that'd be yeah. that's pretty sweet like the vector with the bolt that goes down um, right right not not yeah. an stg 44 you know the germans had really good technology but it sure as hell wasn't that good so yeah I'm going to I'm going to get you one day. I'm going to bait you into an absolute STG 44 outburst where you just rant. I mean, what as soon as you play with me in uh Wars in Wars <laughs> on our Rebirth, you'll hear it. If anyone anyone that plays with me, they hear it all the time, so <laughs> not hard to do. I'm ready for it. Um so yeah, I think that if you're cool with it, I think that pretty much covers too. Um there's like um there's a little bit of uh current news today right like a new a new map came out uh yes. for a rebirth yeah. and yep. boom i have it production oh, team sweet. shout okay. out beautiful uh, beautiful um so yeah this actually came out was teased today uh, mm -hmm. which kind of kind of caught a lot of people including myself off guard i know there were rumors of a new uh resurgence map but this looks mm -hmm. to be it um there's still some confusion going around again sorry podcast listener you can't see it um but there's some confusion going around with the size of it. Mm -hmm. um, initially, they thought that it was going to be larger, um, like two and a half times larger than the current Rebirth Island. Um, yeah. They've walked that back a little bit because some of the scales aren't making sense um, mm. to pixels. So It definitely still... looks bigger for sure. Uh, it definitely would be at least one and a half to, I would say, two based on just what I'm seeing visually. Had they see what the scale actually is. but But yeah. It, apparently they're going to be nuking rebirth right getting rid of it like they did with verdansk and bring this in which yeah i think is actually a good and much needed something that's a good change for once so we'll see have to wait and see how the map actually plays that's yet to be determined but um yeah. they're doing something which is good yeah definitely it looks good <laughs> uh i think a lot of people are playing rebirth um you can tell that just from the yeah, queue times yeah. like if you go try to play call Derek, you can go to the bathroom Takes forever yeah yeah you go yeah. to the bathroom mix an old-fashioned <laughs> and come, trust me i've done it and come back and play caldera and then it, but if you queue up for rebirth it's it's instant um, you can't even like requeue from a lobby in caldera so like if you if the game ends you die or whatever you can't like play again i always have to go back out and try we have to try and requeue to get into a caldera match and i don't need, i gave up on caldera i can't play it anymore but i think a lot of people yeah. have and i think yeah. it might this might like kill it even more because i think the majority of people are playing yeah uh yeah rebirth so it'll be cool i have yeah, i've liked i've liked rebirth the whole time so I'm, I'm pretty excited to get some new content i'm hoping warzone 2 has even more and i hope they're gonna be like mm -hmm. more than one map active at a time so you get even more i hope so too i think that's a big thing that they need to do, really do with, with with warzone 2 but i mean speaking of this map i mean it looks it looks good i have to say I, i'm a little concerned with some of the openness on the far right hand side of that by the camp and behind winery area but um, it looks like there's some verticality there. So again, we'll have to see more about this map. I'm sure this is, sounds like it's going to be the start of season four, at least somewhere within season four. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm like you. I'm enjoying Rebirth a lot, and that's really the only thing I'm playing. And I like it because you can get away with any weapon. You don't necessarily need to use suppressors if you don't want to. You can kind of get away with that. Um, it's the only game where you can really have, I would say, fun, and you're not tied to 
to specific not everybody's using a meta stg basically <laughs> yeah i like it a lot um and I, I think that's probably the case where you're talking about the openness on the right side with the winery mm -hmm. generally like they go grapes on the side of hills so i'm, I'm picturing those lines as, like, like, ter as yeah. like terraces yeah that's exactly what i'm thinking too so it looks like it'll be verticality there which is good and there's enough cover from what i'm seeing so um this this should be a good change for those of us that are liking rebirth um i know and for, I, I i know my community for the most part is like i get comments all the time especially in my discord no one's playing at all anymore and especially people are like you know i gave up on the game i still enjoy why the content maybe this will bring some some more folks back if it's a good map which it looks like there's a good mix of some urban engagement areas here which i like to see on the uh the top of the map as well as the far left side there in the town area so that should be that should be good and hopefully refreshing some Heck good yeah. urban yeah. combat we'll have, to, we'll have to drop in on one the big yeah, probably. the big question i got out of this though is like does it not look like smuggler's cove and some of those islands the only way to get to them is through water are they going to bring swimming in early and like up at the bay and stuff or is I, i'm guessing what they're gonna do is that that's gonna be sh it looks like shallow water and i think on caldera they added some portions um by the lighthouse area on caldera where oh, they did the, that exact same thing where you can kind of trek through that water there so i'm guessing it's gonna be like that it'll be sh it'll probably be like waist high-ish you can't slide or sprint um but that's what they're gonna be i don't think it doesn't look like that'll be an area to swim but you'll at least be able to get in the water and not insta die why you gotta ruin my fun i know i, I was know. excited i thought i was gonna go swimming <laughs> early um but yeah that makes that makes more sense than my stupid idea um i think you but, can you can probably swim way below that though you should try dropping way down at the very bottom outside those red lines if i will swim there <laughs> yeah i will not on purpose but i'll do it <laughs> i always joke about how it's windy gust of wind caught my parachute i don't yeah, know what happened yeah. guys i'm yeah. sorry i don't want to all the time yep uh town and keep look like places i'm gonna stay away from um they look see those look good to me I, I want that urban i want that urban combat i think that'll be good um i've been playing with like the odin a lot the s12 so i think that's like that's what i want man. i need those i need those close quarters areas where i can rock some some heavy 12.7 ammo and mess some people up <laughs> yeah no that's good I, i'll i'll get in there i it, it's gonna i hope they are I hope they do a good job with the roofs roofs mm -hmm. roofs how does he say that plural roofs i'm sure they'll have yeah roofs right i think they'll have they'll probably have zip balloons there uh as well and zip lines going up yeah, to the rooftops help. but i definitely like i like those that verticality just because like it allows you to it allows you another way to play the game the way i play it is like more tactically like obviously why wouldn't you be stupid not to go to the high ground but there needs to be a counter to the high ground right so holding the high ground gives you tactical advantage but um as long as there's a counter you know typically like on, on rebirth currently there's the two towers um yeah it's a good a good advantage but all you got to do is drop an airstrike so <laughs> people complain about it but just drop an airstrike here get them out of the tower yep true but anyway i was excited this came out today and it looks good i look forward I'm to playing it i think yeah. so as far as timing goes i think we're about a week out um so it looks if like I, next Wednesday, I think I heard, right? The 22nd? Uh, yeah, so I saw on the post in one of the articles or something where it talks about what was next in the roadmap. June mm -hmm. 20 to 22nd was okay. a redacted rebirth mode. So they mm -hmm. redacted it. And It'll then probably I be think, like the the nuke the the map mm -hmm, event, probably, yep. right? Yeah. And then I think and then I think the 22nd is when the battle pass ends. So like everything's okay. lining up to that 22nd or 23rd mm. with a new right. event starting next week. That'll be cool. It does look whatever whatever that says in the middle of the map, Grotto or something. Grotto, it looks yeah. like that's yeah, it looks like that's an underground cave entry. Mm -hmm. Am I crazy? Is that what it looks like to you? No, I I think that's what it looks like too and it really yeah. could I could definitely see it having a tunnel that leads out that'd under the roads of Smuggler's that'd Cove. Be sick. 
That'd be sick. Uh, if, it, if it has tunnels that probably branch out to the different areas, that'd be really cool. You could just drop right straight in the tunnel. There was that por- portion on uh, Verdansk. Remember they opened up the airport and there was like a bomb blew up the airport? Yep. You could I dive can. right down onto the runway. Something probably like that would be really cool. Yeah, and then on the north side of the map, there was also that missile silo that you could like dive down into and then the, oh, yeah, yeah. there were all yep. that stuff too. So it'd be a similar exactly. deal. I think you can almost see like at the north end of the Smuggler's Cove, you can see like a notch in there and I could see that I being see the tunnel it. that leads to the I grotto see it. yeah it looked like i see another right right to the right of grotto i see like another potentially another hole in the ground there as well between some of those buildings i i am curious though what the architecture is going to be like is this going to be a caldera based world war ii environment with the the architecture or is it going to be uh like a an 80s cold war type environment or is it going to be a more modern environment or is it going to be a mix i'm curious what it's actually going to look like um i'm dying for some modern architecture or at least similar we have in rebirth but we'll have to have to see what they go with here i think i saw uh dubs asking in the chat about uh redeploy balloons i think they um added i think someone's i saw someone on twitter said they saw spots on here like they zoomed in mm-hmm. and saw spots for five redeploy balloons Okay. So I'm sure they'll have those. Again, that really mixes it up when it comes to rooftops. It makes it incredibly mm-hmm. hard to hold a rooftop because people can drop on you at any time. So, um, yeah, I'm sure they'll have them. There's no reason they wouldn't. And typically, they they like alternate. So where they are, sometimes they're not there. Other times, so I'm sure this is just a, a version that they're not easily you're not easily able to see them unless you zoom in and look for the way the platforms may be. So that'll be a good map. I'm definitely pumped. Something new. Hopefully it's a, hopefully it plays well. That's all we can it's, hope. It's definitely needed. I hope it's not a Caldera situation where everybody will want res- the Rebirth Island back. Like they want Verdansk back. Oh, I, I, yeah. Let's hope they don't run into that again. Jesus. But I think it's cool. I think it's a really smart move where I think based on polls that I've seen from large creators that the majority of people are playing Rebirth um, yeah, or Resurgence. Definitely. So I, I think it's really cool and um, excited for it um i think um that's about all i had i really hoped we could keep this episode like under two hours and i think we did really close we did um so um that was a lot of stuff we got through um one of the other things i wanted to talk about um before we go and i guess we can kind of get into this do you have a little bit of time left for like a chat unit yeah let's do it okay so if anybody has anything they want to talk about question or statement in chat um definitely can the two another game have you heard of the witchfire game no i haven't but if i looked at it i may i may recognize it all right is it, is it i don't going to be coming I, um yeah it's been for a long time it's one of those oh really but okay people got including myself got really hyped for it with elden ring it's almost okay. like elden ring but a first person shooter and i, I don't oh, know if you get sweet. into those games at all um but it's like a mixture of magic and shooting so um that was shown that was shown at summer's game fest um i could see that being really interested um i got i got hyped about it and made a video back when elden ring was like super big because i had remembered it i was like people are hyped about elden ring imagine if you could you know have like gunplay and stuff it's not grounded in reality at all but it's just yeah that's as long as it's fun right I like yeah. I like those out there fun games too, like this. So that 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 actually I, looks pretty cool. <laughs> I thought it was cool because it's like something different. Um, if you like that like magic type stuff in medieval, but you still like to pew pew, it's got it all. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And then again, I was <laughs> so crazy um, that he came into the chat. I was actually going to talk about uh, Road to Vostok um, here at the end um a little bit they showed it's been a couple weeks ago um but he had um another uh dev blog where he talked about like how they're gonna do um looting and stuff like that um hey so. he's still here nice yeah and i did i did see that blog as well um, oh whoa he's working on some weapon mechanics all right here we go they really work on weapon mechanics is there some specific mechanic or weapon related feature simulation that you would wish to see in a really realistic fps games in the future um i i like the uh the bit in tarkov about um arm stamina um and i think i already saw that in one of his uh in one of his 
uh, dev blogs. So I, th I think that's super good. So people can't just sit there and um, hold corners the whole time. Um, the jamming mechanics are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like like to, having to take care of your weapons and stuff like that adds really cool aspects to the game. Um, do you think there's room to innovate some new weapon mechanics for realistic FPS games, or does this topic fall into the category uh, no need to reinvent the wheel? Um, no, I think honestly, <laughs> in my completely unqualified opinion, um, I'm just a video game stooge. Um, the uh, Tarkov is getting close, is like the closest in my opinion. Um, some of the recoil mechanics and stuff don't make a lot of sense in Tarkov, um, but That's like what I was thinking yeah, some of that some of that doesn't make a lot of sense um, With the weapons and the damage and stuff, but like mm -hmm. um, the way they handle weapon sway um, arm stamina uh, The jamming and like the inertia with guns and weapons and stuff like that. Um, I think are actually really cool um, It's it just doesn't it doesn't need to to have a ton of, of different stuff. I don't feel like yeah, that's something I would even need to think about. I, I like you said the re I like the re weapons that have like unique recoil patterns per the caliber and, and what it is, you know. Um, and but that's <laughs> it's not as simple as a question. I definitely would need to think about it. I like the arm stamina. I like being able to. I mean, as simple as it is, as it sounds like the inspect for the weapon. It's just such a rewarding thing to like uh have your weapon that you've kind of made your own and just be able to like look at it in game and inspect it i, I always like that maybe check the chamber things like that is always something i love so but i'm i'm a weapon nerd so <laughs> yeah and i think something else that would be kind of cool and this has nothing to do really with gameplay it's more an immersion thing i think having the gun break down and add like scratches and maybe rust and stuff like the longer you've had it um i i think would be pretty cool too um, I'm not sure if this was in there or not. Um, but yeah, if everyone's taking off, we'll see you. Insurgent, thanks for chilling. I super appreciate it. Um, thanks for thanks for being here. And also, dude, huge shout out to Road to Vostok. I, I'm like still like a little bit like floored that, that he's here. That's really cool. Um, right now on screens, he's uh, showing from the devlog where he's uh, showing how like loot was going to be interspersed mm. in the room. Um, Sweet. It's pretty cool. It's really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I think something like a game like uh, Road to Vostok really has it just a super unique and really cool atmosphere and i think mm -hmm. I, I don't know i'm kind of a sucker for details right like so if i saw right. if i if i had a gun that like after i dived on the ground dived after i dove on the ground i have no business talking in front of people um <laughs> after i dove on the ground if it maybe had some scratches and stuff and maybe the bluing started to wear off and it had some mud on it and stuff i i think would be really cool so like if you yeah. had a gun if you had a gun that you had for like a really long time and even stuff about maybe maybe if i'm not sure how often you'll come across combat but like if kills are kind of rare it'd be really cool like if you had to etch in your gun like a, a notch for your kills like on the stock or on the receiver or somewhere where you could inspect and see that um i i think would be super super cool or the weapon is like it kind of tells a story right like and it would even it might even lead to like gear fear <laughs> a mm -hmm. little bit more like if you had a gun that you've had a really long time maybe you have a name for it uh one of my shotguns is actually named eleanor uh, it's got a name <laughs> so like if you had if you had something like that when it would break down and would show the where and the story and the stuff that you've been through and maybe the kills you've had i, I think that would be really cool um in a an atmospheric game like Vostok, would be pretty i cool. love i love that idea i've always been a fan of like weapon wear and when you look at uh like navy seal delta operators like their photos with their their m4 platforms like the they usually have like the desert camo on the desert paint and you it's just all like worn down you can see where it's chipped all over the place there's a lot of black coming through from the initial hand guards and stuff so you can tell obviously that weapon's fired a lot of rounds and seen a lot of use i'm, I'm always a big fan of of that like if you've fired however based on how many rounds you fired or how many how long you've traveled with a weapon in a game however it'll affect kind of the wear and tear and the breakdown of like the paint and things like that would be, that's always a cool, uh, cool feature that I, I, I think is like underutilized in games, to be honest. So he said he's actually showed procedural weapon wear in one of the work in progress videos. That's, that's cool. amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's it. That's huge. Cause you don't see that. 
like even in Tarkov, you don't see weapon wear visually. I don't believe, if, right? No. As far as I mean, there's not there's not even weapon paint in the game. But uh, paint paint aside, you don't really see the weapon wear as like the scratches accumulated on the weapon if you if you've used it a lot. Yeah, I th I think like the scratches and the wear and stuff like add character or whatever, like yeah. being being cliche. Um, but that's just that's those little details that I think they get people talking about a game. Like yeah. I remember how cool it was in like Battlefield One when you dove in the mud and there was mud on your gun. Like I thought that was so cool. Like because mm -hmm. it was like the first time that happened. So like if you can just keep improving on that and again like the gun i feel like the gun is something to target too because in a first person shooter it's always on your screen like you always yeah. see the thing right um, right so like having that there is like be that would be really cool like yeah. I, i'm really excited to see uh where vostok ends up and uh the way the way he's being transparent with the uh with the development of it is super cool too i think it could inspire people and people could learn uh, learn a lot. Let's yeah, how, the game looks awesome. Through. I'm I'm excited to get some uh, some more footage of it. Every time those those dev blogs come out, I I sit down and watch them. So I subbed wait I think like two or three months ago. I happened to just stumble upon a video of one of those, and I was like, I remember just thinking like, wow, that looks awesome. So yeah, it's, really it's cool it, have them in chat. It's super super cool to watch, and definitely we'll be we'll be following that. Uh, the whole way because yeah it's one of those games that really catches your eye just just because it looks it looks so immersive and cool it does and, yep. and where he's he's working on he's working on details like like weapon wear and stuff like that it's just it makes it makes it so much better and the looting and stuff looks really really refined and how the loot mm -hmm. spread across the rooms and stuff is just cool and the environment and like, looks great too like you said immersive just the outside photos we saw there of the gameplay in the in the woods looked great Yep. So, no, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Um, we're gonna play it. And yeah, super cool, super cool to have him here. I would have to think that's a hard question to answer. Um, off the rip. Yeah. Um, for like, sure. what, how would you change it or whatever? Um, to an extent, I don't think you need to reinvent the wheel. Like, you could. I mean, you could talk about you know weapons and and shooter games forever, and starting all the way up with the bullets need to register. <laughs> Yeah. And and like the aiming and mouse feel needs to be there. Battlefield kind of missed that on this last one. Um yeah. but there's there's just a lot of stuff you could talk about there. I'd have to think on that. But um Sad Blast will be a vicinity looting system where it brings up a menu that shows everything lootable in the nearby area. Kind of like scum, huh? I, I watched some scum gameplay, but I never played it, but I didn't I didn't even know that was a feature in that game. I haven't that's either. Cool. Is that that's similar to like PUBG, where you hit like the tab button, and if you walk close to something, it pops up on your menu, and okay. then you could kind of fine tune like the vicinity and like wh mm. what that would be. Choose from so kind of yeah, nice, cool, nice, yeah, that's awesome. That's super cool. We we'll have to get we'll have to get him on for an interview. Have a special guest. That would be cool. Yeah, this is really it's really impressive. You know, you're showing the footage there. It looks look it's cool to see kind of the behind the scenes, you know, how the looting works, things like that. Cause uh modern game development, you know, they they typically from what I they don't really show that. So it's cool right. to see the process. Right. And not not only is he single handedly making a game, he's also making content on the development of it <laughs> and like the lead up to it and yeah, it's just it's just really cool. Wow, that's amazing. Impressive, for sure. Yeah, it just talks about like the thought process and everything going into it. I, I really hope, I really hope it's, uh, hope it's successful. Same here. Yeah, looks great. Sadballs has a question about Modern Warfare Roman numeral two. Bring it on. Oh, do it. Look at the oh that murder that. Looks so cool. Anyway, that sorry. does that look. Yeah, that looks awesome. That environment <laughs> in the house. Yeah, I dig it. It's gonna and be I a game like, I'm gonna play for sure. And I, I feel like I think if I understand it right, I'm really sorry if I butcher this or mess it up. It's gonna be kind of more like single player, like PVE. But like, I feel like that really adds to it, honestly, because like that alone feeling, like it's just you, like going to, going down the road trying to get from place to place, is like 
and you're like all alone in this like desolate. How, how scary is that? I mean, that's kind of like freaking me out just thinking about it. Because so, yeah, you're not gonna be able to. If that is the case, just going around this desolate environment, yeah, it's like terrifying. It looks <laughs> like a. Lo- it I could love it. Be like a horror game. Almost. Yeah. Right. Exactly. But really, really cool. Awesome. No, sorry, I'm get lost in that stuff. Um, do we think Warzone and Warzone Two are going to be connected anyway, whatsoever? If so, how would it bring older weapons into the new Gunsmith? I don't think so. I think they're cutting the cord. Isn't that right? They're like starting over. Yeah, that's what they said. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be. They're starting fresh with Modern Warfare Two, so they're not bringing anything, anything over. We're not gonna see any Cold War guns. We're not gonna see any Vanguard guns. Um, I. You're obviously going to see guns that are the same from Modern Warfare 19 to uh, Modern Warfare 2. Like, obviously, there's going to be M4s, right? So there's going to be the same guns, but I don't think they're going to copy and paste the assets over or they're going to roll over in any way. I think for some of the uh, season passes, we'll see guns, you know, the same ones we saw in Modern Warfare uh, 2019 come over. You know, what? like, for example, if the Odin or the Ash-12 um isn't in modern warfare 2's base i must why wouldn't they bring that over down the road right so um but that would obviously be reworked for the engine so um should keep they sh- it sounds like they're gonna keep it to modern warfare 2 guns i'm sure they'll bring in some outliers for sure as well as some new ones you got two years of support but as far as copy and pasting and you know the whole integration thing that we've been seeing the past couple of years that sounds like it's done with which is uh you know good riddance <laughs> Yeah, it's not gonna be like where there's like Cold War MP5, Modern Warfare yeah. MP5. Like yeah. they're they're ditching all those. They'll still be an MP5, right. but it's gonna be the all new, all like the new system, new engine, exactly, uh, new Gunsmith. Yep. Yep. And I think the same goes for operators, right? You're not gonna see. Um, I I I did hear initially they're gonna bring in operators. You're gonna bring in uh, operator skins. I think we'll see some of the same operators probably coming back. But they're not going to port over all the same skins. I think we're going to see the same operators come make a, make a return, um, and they'll probably have some of the same outfits that are redone in the new engine. So it'll be the same with weapons and operators, etc. Um, Road to Vostok with the uh, is that is that a euro or a pound? Um, anyway, it doesn't matter. Thank you so much uh, mm-hmm. for the support and like being here. It's incredible. It's been really cool uh, to chat with you and uh, just. Good luck with everything in the future. And if there's anything like we can do to, to help get it out there, we will. I think I think you're doing just fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on your own with that. There's a lot of people talking about it and rightfully so. Coffee break over, back to work. Getting back get on the game. So yeah, good luck, dude. Thank you so much. It really means a lot uh that you that you popped in and chatted. Um super, super cool. Glad to have you and uh you're welcome on anytime for sure. Yeah, we'll we'll be we'll be following it. So very very oh, yeah. uh very nice of you. Thank you so much for the kind words and everything. Awesome. So yeah, I think that might be that might be it. What a show, you know what man! Wrote? Yeah, it was a, and it's Ooh. crazy that we covered so much, and I think we could still go another two to three hours too. There's just so much oh, to yeah. uh, get in depth with here. Which I mean, the good thing is all this stuff was like just announced, so. I think they are going to have a lot of content to be going over on this show going forward, obviously rolling into whatever is going to be coming with Battlefield for the rest of season one, the Tarkov wipe, all the updated content, um, whatever additional weapons are going to be coming next wipe outside of what they already mentioned, because they usually bring in some more stuff sometimes uh, before they do a new wipe. So I'm sure we'll see some other stuff there. And then everything coming with Modern Warfare 2, you know, we're going to have the Alpha probably in August, the Beta, I'm assuming, Probably break it up into two beta weekends again for September uh, or two separate times. So they have a September and then a beta again in October. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's just a lot going on. And they did uh, just side note, Warzone 2, I think they announced they, they're bumping that up. Initially, it was rumored 2023. Um, they said it's going to release this year. So before the end of the year, we're going to ha- get Warzone 2, which is interesting. So within a couple months of launch of of modern warfare 2 they're i'm probably assuming right the, by the holiday yeah due to the caldera numbers i'm guessing that's why yeah. they're doing that but yeah now that'll be Definitely. cool 
and definitely needed yeah there's going to be stuff to talk about like you said some of the tarkov pre-wipe events get absolutely crazy oh, yeah. um what they do i remember when they last one they made like labs free so like we were taking like scav loot and running around labs all <laughs> stupid and stuff so like oh, um it, yeah it's gonna be fun um there's gonna be a lot of stuff to talk to you essentially what buff is saying is stay tuned to the show because we're not gonna run out of stuff to talk about yeah. i'm the same days. I could keep talking about video games, but um, no, I think this show is really cool um, to to just kind of sum up a week and talk about what's happening and what's going where. And mm-hmm. absolutely, it's, it's a lot of fun. So yeah, we'll be talking about um, a lot. We keep we always keep our eye out for indie games. Again, we'll be following any of the drama surrounding Battlefield and any information we get about Call of Duty, Halo. If it's a video game with guns, we'll talk about it. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, I super, super appreciate everyone for being here, um, for hanging with us in this longer episode. Um, we'll save some of the rest of the stuff for next week. But yeah, there'll be plenty to go on next week around the same time, hopefully. Yep. And can't thank everyone enough. If you're the podcast listener, if you're watching it over on the the uh, um think stupid the scope youtube channel <laughs> um very much appreciated if you've made it to the end you're an absolute mad lad like you're insane if you've made it this far uh appreciate it uh, more than you know and um a special thank you again to buff man thank you for taking the time to do this i know you're busy you got your own fish to fry i appreciate you taking the time to do it and uh bringing in uh, your community as well very kind oh of you. yeah i'm having a blast man this is fun we got a lot it's fun to just have a platform to uh to talk about this more freely versus like, Hey, you know, this is what I'm going to cover in a 10 minute video, you know? So, uh, it's good. And we, <laughs> we talked about a lot here that I would never have time to make a video on, on the Tarkov stuff, the battlefield stuff and all this, all the modern warfare stuff. So it's great to have a, you know, this time slot where we can run through it all. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Let's just kick it on and talk about it. And, uh, exactly. hopefully the, the B team production crew can keep some visual aids on the screen. <laughs> They did pretty so, good tonight. I liked it. Hey, Come I on. think I don't have to give them a raise. They're, they, they need a raise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got it. The key, the key with employees, take this from a supervisor, is to keep them a little bit scared. You want to keep a little bit of fear in them. They might <laughs> lose their job, so then they'll perform better. That's terrible. I'm just kidding. I just had a week. I just had a week of training telling me not to do that. Yeah, <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> so anyway, guys, we'll catch you next time. Uh, thank you so much. Hopefully, see you in a week. Take care, guys. Peace.